Hello and welcome to 360 GamerCast episode 117 for Tuesday the 5th of April 2022. I'm your host Mark Webb, Gamertag, Pierce ID, Steam ID, Webby, 360G and joining me on this very fine evening is... I'm playing this new video game, it's called Sit and Look at the Electric Meter and See if You Can Make It Go Slower. <laughs> it's number one stunt master. <laughs> I'm not giving my Oscar award back, Nick Fights. And just send so switch. Haha, uh -huh. nice to have you back, Stunty. That's all right. Well. I'll come back. I've got to uh, talk about this whole new PlayStation crap. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is on my notes. Yeah, so we'll have a chat about it because you know that I'm number one PlayStation fanboy from what everyone says. Yeah, so there we of go. course. Yeah. Yeah. So just a little bit of housekeeping before we kick off. This is going to be the last show that's live streamed for five weeks. Uh, next, whilst well, next Sunday coming, I'm flying. Oh, I'm going to be on a plane to Australia. So next week, there's not going to be an episode, unfortunately. So those patrons who are a little bit upset, I don't blame you. Oh, I don't want to do a, another episode during the week because it's like, well, one, I'm busy, I've got work and stuff like that. Getting ready to fly and have to pay 100 quid for a fucking COVID test before I go to stupid Australia because they're a bunch of knobbers. Um, so, yes, yeah, it's just not a lot of time between this episode and when I, I, and when I would feasibly be able to record the next one to really have anything of value. So um, what I'm going to do is next week we'll do a normal show. Um, for everybody but during the week as well i'm i'm well next weekend i'm meeting up with sly um so i'm going to be uh bringing my dictaphone and we're going to be you know we're going to go out for a few beers we're thinking of doing a brewery tour are you going um, on a boat yeah. together yeah i'm on a boat man do, do, do. yeah so uh say that. Sly's really up for this little boat ride that you and uh, him together. I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about this <laughs> So yeah, so, so so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an extra recording, and uh, that'll be the uh, a Patreon only audio. So that, I think that's how how we'll work it. So uh, for those patrons who are listening, don't worry, you'll you'll still get an an extra episode. It just won't be you know just life, right? I've got a I'm flying on a Sunday. There's nothing I can do about it. So. Uh, it's just it's just one of those things, and then I'm going to be jet lagged for probably about three or four days because I fucking all I always get terrible jet lag when I've flown, uh, mm. especially for that amount of time, like twenty two plus hours or whatever it is. So, yeah, yeah, you, you'll you'll get there and you'll be fine for the first sort of twelve hours, and then you'll just die. Yeah, that's yeah, what, uh, that's what I did. I when I went to Thailand, I got to Bangkok, and we literally we went out. We went and got food, at like Kings, because this is back in the late nineties when the pound was really strong against the Thai yeah. dollar. I think it was the dollar. Is it, is it the bar out, the out there? Bar. Yeah, yeah. It was something. I can't remember what it was now. Yeah. Um, and then it sort of, and it just hit us, and that was it. We were gone for like yeah, yeah, yeah. hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just gonna be long, a long old. Uh travel uh but i do have two nintendo switches i'm bringing a tablet i wasn't going to bring in my evercade but i'm thinking i might just leave it here because it's just a load of cartridges that i can't be fucked to lug around yeah i'd uh, leave it um i was playing my evercade today a little bit and i do uh, you know i'm still enjoying it but the thing is like most of the games there that you can get on the evercade you can get on the switch anyway and i own most of them on the switch the ones that i want you know the uh, you know the arcade, the arcade ar archive games and stuff, yeah. Um, so that's fine. Um, so I'm gonna have plenty to do anyway. Plenty of games. Yeah, you'll be on the beach with the babes. Yeah, man, it'd be <laughs> awesome. With my fat belly hanging over my my, my speedos. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm definitely not beach body ready. Been slacking recently when it comes to the gym. I think I've actually put Just blame it on, on the uh, blame it on the lockdown. Yeah. So um. So so yeah. So, so 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 that's what's going on. It's come long quick, really has. 
yeah so so there's that uh, i've got a few games to talk about um watch wrestlemania today well well i'll say i watch wrestlemania i used to love wrestling i just wanted to do this tiny little um discussion <laughs> before we do i used to love wrestling back in the late 90s uh early 2000s absolutely loved it i was the right age you know like a young teenager the attitude that, era yeah the yeah the attitude era and that was like the golden era, era I, I think in wrestling and i watched it since stone cold and the rock left because they were the, you know the the two best wrestlers like you know apart from like the likes of the undertaker and that who and the undertaker just retired as well um but yeah so wrestlemania just ha- it, well it's happening it's like it's over two nights now four two four hour nights it's like what the fuck what? Yeah, so have a WrestleMania weekend now. So they had four hours last night, and I got another four hours tonight. I had like uh, a three-hour Friday night, the Hall of Fame, where they uh, like yeah. talk about all the older people and stuff. Like yeah, that. so I so watched the Hall of Fame stuff with the Undertaker, which was really good. But um, I, I watched. I didn't watch. Well, so all I watched of the uh, WrestleMania from last night, because again, there's another one tonight different fights was literally just the end with stone cold <laughs> and, it, and it was really funny actually it was literally like 20 minutes of him wrestling again and just drinking beer the whole time as as he was wrestling um and then it was just quite interesting but yeah because i've got the wwe channel and it's fuck like i tried to watch wrestling this week to try and get into wrestlemania i was just like oh my god it's so shit these days it really has gone the crap like none of the characters are relatable at all. They're all just really silly. Um, there just doesn't seem to be. I any... think it's the fact that you like generally wrestling became very story driven with all these like heel turns and things like that going on. Like week in week out, you almost couldn't miss an episode because if yeah. you missed an episode, you'd go back in and all of a sudden, two people that hate each other are now on a tag team together against yeah, someone yeah, else. Yeah, 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 yeah kind of a thing and i think when you just drop out of it you, that's why you look at a lot of these characters bar obviously the people whose names you know yeah and just think who are these people yeah, <laughs> sort of yeah. Worse. yeah. yeah. anyway so i just wanted to mention that so um because obviously uh the game's out and uh we'll talk about the game later good anyway stunty is here hello stunty he uh, he's made Hello. a return. He's 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 made a return because he knows that he's not going to be able to talk to us about his awesome games for five weeks now. So he thought he'd better he needs to turn up. Last on. <laughs> okay, so so what so what you been playing then, my man? Um, still playing Mass Effect Two. Um, oh wow! I'm, yeah, I'm I'm I'll be honest. My gaming time has really dropped at the moment. It's it's that time of year now. It's starting to get yeah a bit more you know daylight. I've got a lot more going on. I'm doing a lot of house you know sort of work on the house again. It's just general crap. It's just, you just don't get as much time as you used to. Um, yeah, 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 I'm still playing Mass Effect Two. I'm really enjoying it. I've the only thing I will just say this because um, it's the complete edition. What's it called? I can't remember what's called now. Where are we? It's legendary. the legendary edition. It's um, it comes with all the DLC. Yeah. Now I never played any of the DLC for Mass Effect Two. Oh. I just went through the main story, so it's quite nice because I played the Stormbreak Stormbreak uh, Broker DLC. Oh, right. Um, and it was good. Yeah, it's really good. It was like quite a good little storyline, and there's more characters I think than I remember in this. Um, you know, you got like your. We have a probably a little bit of spoiler on this. You, oh, it's I haven't now. got to yet. Yeah, you know, you know, there's a bit where you have to get all your characters through for the end section where you have the big battle. Yeah. Now, and you have this like main screen where it shows you all the characters, and then you can pick two characters to then to go into one of the, you know, action sections. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember it having as many characters as it, as it has. Oh right, how come? So unless they've because it's the DL, yeah, you know, it's got all the DLC. They've added them into the, like the you know the taskbar where it shows the characters and the rest of it. I don't know. There always were like some characters that were DLC. I think was it Zed was one of them in. One yeah, of the that's games. right. I've just done his mission because I didn't remember him, and he was sitting down at the bottom of the ship, and I was like, well, I went and did a mission and got him, 
Um, and he's a bit of an arsehole, to be honest. He's uh, he's a proper, like, he wants to just destroy everything. Um, <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm doing that route anyway. I've gone down the Paragon uh, route. Renegade, uh, don't you mean? Sorry, Renegade, sorry, yes. That's what I meant, Renegade route. Um, and I've just done a mission with him where he said, what do we do? Do we save these people? Or And he was like, well, no, I don't want to save the people because I want to find the person that I want to get. You know, instead of saving the people, I want to shoot this person dead. And, uh, yeah, he went down the mission and he did. He just shot him dead. <laughs> well, actually, no, he chucked a grenade at him. Got but, be done. Um, yeah, got to be done. But, yeah, I, there's quite a bit of the game that's extra bits that, because, you know, I played it on the 360, so I never played the DLC. So, but it's good. Yeah, really good, I must admit. So, yeah, that's what I mean. So the classic games, aren't they? And two's, re- you know, it's, re- it's it's regarded as the best one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. There's um the trouble. I mean, three was okay apart from the ending, which would be interesting to see what ending I've got actually, because they've they changed it all, didn't they, on Mass Effect three, didn't they? Because I played the original ending before. So did I. Yeah. Before before everyone went, oh, I don't like the ending. I can't handle it like this. Um. So they changed, it, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. But um, I don't know what ending we're going to get at all, you know. So, um, and then there was the next one, wasn't the Adronomer, Adronomer, was it? And, uh, Andromeda, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't very good. But there is, you know, there, there is talk still of they're going to do another Mass Effect at some point. Okay. Uh, mm, but who knows? We will find what Bioware get up to. So, yeah. um, The next game I've been playing is, uh, I'm still playing Elden Ring. How how are you getting uh, on with that now? Yeah, I I'd slow down on it because um, literally, well, I was going through it and I was doing quite well and I was playing with my friend Judd, um, but he's just rinsing through it. So it was it got to a stage where I didn't really want to play with him on it because he was too high level. So it'd feel like you're cheesing all the bosses. And yeah. I didn't really want to do that to certain degree. I wanted to make sure, you know, because he was level 100 and, 120 and i was like at the time i was about level 40 it was like mm, uh-huh. this is going to be a bit you know so i stopped playing with him but then my daughter was really interested in getting this game she said oh yeah and i said well if i bought it for you would you play it uh because the problem was is i couldn't do this digital thing because i actually had the ps5 version um uh-huh. so i ended up buying her the ps4 version and uh she started the game and we've been playing most of it co-op together. Oh, that's cool. And brilliant, because we've never really played a co-op game to this involved, as in, like, normally we just play a little bit of a co-op game for, like, an hour or two. But this is, you know, we've had nights we've been on for, like, three hours together trying to work things out. I mean, we've even had times where we're sitting eating our dinner in the other room, we're on YouTube, and we're working out what we're going to do with this. <laughs> That and my missus has come and says, "Oh my god, you two are obsessed with this game." <laughs> it's, it's just, the only problem yeah, it's with um, doing co-op, I think, is the fact you can't can't get on your horse. That's that, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've had a we've had a couple of bits where, say, I've opened the grace or she's opened the grace, um, and then what we do is said, "Right, okay, so you've opened the grace or there." What we do is we just do it single. You go, and I we we both just do it singly. Yeah, yeah, and we're yeah, meeting yeah. in place, and then we start the next section together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm now 32 hours in, so I'm not that far, you know, that many hours. I'm level 59. Yeah. So, you know, not bad. I've, I've done a few bosses. I'm, I, I'm, well, I'm not stuck on a boss because there's other, I mean, you can never get stuck on a boss anyway because if you don't, if you can't do it, you just go off and do else thing. You know, other things. Yeah. Uh, I'm at the boss, the one that does the two stages. It's the Rian. Is it Rihanna? Most bosses have two stages in this game, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, it's, it's the one, it's the one in, that looks like a library. It's got the library books and it's got all the things on the floor. Um, and she's up in the air and you have yeah, to. Yeah, whack. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, that boss is a pain. The first section is a piece of piss. The second section, she does a beam of light at you. Yeah. And then she, she then chucks out all her ashes of war at you and the rest of it. Uh, and we've been doing it. We've been trying to do it, both of us, me and my daughter, in co-op. And I just get battered um, because she's just, you know, she's quite powerful, isn't she? And it doesn't take much for her to kill you if she gets the beam of light on you, you know, or her magic 
weapons on you. So we've sort of left her for a little bit, and we're going to go back to her and do um, another section of her. Yeah, well, do that later on. Mm. Um, I mean, uh, the thing I like about this game. I mean, I mean, I finished it last week, and <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I and I moaned about it already. Peebs has finally done it as well, so he's happy. Mm. However. Oh. Um, I had a little bit this week of 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 watching some speed runs, mm. and it's been really interesting. Uh, there, there's what the the world record. It's under just under nineteen minutes. Wow! <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, there's some glitches in the game that they've taken advantage of, uh, where it kind of zips you across the map. Um, yeah. But but yeah, it's just I really think fascinating. There on purpose. For things like that, yeah, but it's but I tell you, like you know, I mean, you, I mean, you know how much I've moaned and Peeps has moaned and other people have moaned about some of the about the end boss, yeah, how mm. hard it is, uh, and 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 like these speed runners just do absolutely demolish these, you know, these tough bosses. Hell, man, it's crazy to watch. But that's why I find it so so fascinating because it's. You know, we spend hours and hours on these game on on this game, like leveling up and exploring and stuff like that. And these speedrunners are just like, yeah, un- under twenty minutes, done. Madness, absolutely insane. So, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. If you look up on YouTube, it's a really interesting watch. Actually, I was I was just kind of in uh-huh. awe when I when I was watching it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's a great game, but 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 I do feel that the end boss did sour it for me. The whole the whole game because you know up until that last boss I, I thought the game was great and you know I did struggle with other with other bosses but it felt you know kind of fair in a way like I like I had done so, done something wrong or you know being being caught out whatever but the last boss in the game is just shit you know and it just absolutely mullers you um you know, and it just it just did kind of ruin the game for me a, a little bit, to be honest. But I really enjoyed the rest of the game. Yeah. Wait. So you wanted to say on the game, Stunty? Are you there? I can't hear you, Stunty. If you're there. Has he let? Out? Is he probably had a crash out, and he? Yes, he's back, but he's not talking. Can't hear you, Stunty. Him uh, out the uh... Stunty. Hopefully, he's not having a seizure or something. Yeah. So anyway, Stunty's <coughs> vanished. I don't know where he's gone. Um, but but yeah, but I mean, the thing with Elden Ring is is is. Uh, the, the the conversations are still flowing. I noticed on Discord, which is quite cool. Um, they're not flowing as much as they were because I think quite a few people have have completed it now. Um, but it, it was quite interesting for that time just to be going into party chat with people who I haven't game with in ages, like Urban Big P, um, and we did some co op. Um, we had some good co op action, you know, playing it uh, in free player myself. Phil and Peebs helping each other out on some of the bosses. Um, like that fire giant who's just a pain in the ass. Um, you know, so it, it's, it's been good for that. To be honest, it has generated the most discussion uh, of any game for quite a while, I think. Um, yeah, sorry about that. I just I, My battery went flat. So I just, oh, okay. Oh, okay. I, That's well, right. I didn't go flat. I forgot to plug it in. Um, yeah, it's a good game. I mean, I love the way that I've found, finally found a game I can play with my daughter. I mean, she's doing a magic build anyway. I did notice the one thing I have come across is that um, when we've come up against certain enemies, her magic damage is just as in like she can just sit sit back and, uh, you yeah, know, she does so, a lot of damage where I have to get up close and do stuff. I mean, I've got my fire that I can do, but... It has made it. You can tell the magic build is the easiest build to go yeah, for. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. The only thing is, I have come across is, um, I, I think I spoke this, about this before. We've we've been invaded quite a lot uh, because yeah. we're doing the co-op. Um, we've been invaded. Oh, oh, invasion as in like, um, it, as in how many times have we died from that? 
it's probably 50 50 at the moment actually because oh, okay. we've, we've actually we've held our own against some of these dudes um i'll be honest the only time we've ever uh, we've ever died is because of some of the things they've done that are a bit cheap yeah um they, and this is the, this is the only thing of the game that i don't like um you can get invaded in the game which is great i don't have a problem with it but the only thing is is if you're in a certain section of the game where you've got a lot of enemies around you they are immune to the enemies yeah so basically so what happens is you come to a section you're you're trying to fight these enemies and you've got this dude that's invaded your woman could be either um, and they're just they will try and i've noticed a few of them will try and drag you into that where the enemies yeah, are yeah 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 so that they can, <laughs> yeah yeah so because we had it last I've night had it, we had, i've had it as well yeah yeah we had it as a tv so right okay evie don't go in there Bring bring him to us because he's trying to get us to come in there because we were we got invaded the bit by where you got the fingers that come out the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, huh. you know if they grab you, they lo- you lose half your health. Yeah. So yeah. so what we did is we made him come to us, and then what you do is you do your cheeky thing where I said, well, what you do, you stand there, right? I'm going to hide around the corner here, so when he comes out, I can get behind him, and I've got a, a blood loss weapon. And that does a lot of damage when you actually, you know, attack someone with that. And it was good, you know. But we've had a couple of cheeky ones as well where, oh, man, we got we got blitzed by some dude. We were going up the lift. We got invaded. When we got to the top of the lift, he was at the top there ready for us. And uh... as soon as we got up it, he just swung his sword near one of these special swords that spun around really fast. It was like, <laughs> and he just did a cheap kill on us. It was like, you tosser, you know, sort of thing. It was like... You know, but it's it's been it's just one of those things. I mean, every time we play, we play it now. and We do cut. We're, we're always prepared for the we're going to get invaded. You know. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, there we go. And then uh, Friday night, uh, my friend Judd he came on, and we had three of us. We were doing it. We've I've never had three of us play the game before, and uh, that was really good. That was we were sort of like. The only, well, we were doing a boss, actually. It was one of the bosses that I had to do. I can't remember what the boss was now. Uh, it was a boss on a horse. I can't remember what it was called. And it was in a ring, like a round ring. Oh, my God. I couldn't believe it. These, The, the, the other two were sort of just doing magic damage from a distance. And the thing is, because I've got a sword and I just go in there and sort of get up close and sort of attack and the rest of it, it was like we were just near the end. The boss was nearly dead. And my daughter goes... Oh, don't die yet, because yeah, like that. And next thing, <laughs> what happened? I died. <laughs> so I said to her, "Why did you say that? I died." I, well, I was just telling you, don't die, that you know, sort of thing, because your health was quite low. So we went into it again. We did the battle again. Got him really down low to health, and then I got caught near him. And my daughter goes, "Don't die again." And guess what? I only died again, didn't I? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the third time, right, we did this again, got him all the way down, right? And then I went, oh, don't die then. And I died, didn't I? <laughs> Just as uh, I killed the boss, but I got the trophy and I got the ruins still. So, which was, a, well, as in they were just sat there for me for when I went back. But it's because what happened is I got just too close to the boss, really. And it just seemed to sort of like, because I was closest, it just went for me instead of the other two because they were sitting from a distance. But yeah, yeah it's one of those things. But um, yeah, it's uh, a very good game. Well, it's a great game, having a lot of fun with it. It's probably a game I'm going to be playing for months with my daughter, really, because, you yeah, know, we're just doing, going through bits together anyway. So People will be playing it for years. Yeah, I mean, she's nearly up to, she's 45 now, I think, 45, 46, so she's catching me up already. So, and then she's got a day off on Tuesday, so she's probably going to be on it all bloody day, isn't she? So, <laughs> um, so. Um, <coughs> other than that, um, <coughs> I did pick up, um, I know a lot of people don't have any, uh, have this system, but I did pick up an Evercade uh, cartridge. Oh yeah, it was a new one actually. It's just come out. It's called the um, Renovations. I've seen. Uh, yeah, that seems to be uh, quite a lot of people seem to be quite happy about that on the uh, Facebook yeah, group that that we're both in. Yeah, it's um, it's a, it's actually probably my favourite cartridge at the moment of all really? the ever game. Yeah, it's really good. It's got some really good games on it. Um, mm. the, I, the one thing I will say though is I don't know any of the games. 
So these are supposed to be all these are supposed to be all old nineties games. Now the only one I know of is is Soul uh Soul Decent. Now what's it called? Soul Let's have a look. Do, 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 do. Soul Dece. Now I think that used to be um that was an old mega C D game um, right. on the Sega system. Um it's a side show, side scrolling shoot 'em up. Um Graphically wise, yeah, it looks like it's, it's from the nineties, and that's the one thing. A lot of the all these games, they're all from the nineties. Um, I mean, you have got Final Zone. I have I have heard of Final Zone. I've never played it. I must admit, um, but there's some other bits on here that I don't know anything about. You have got a game called Valis, which is a. Um, oh, I've definitely heard of Valis. Have you heard of Valis? Shooter, yeah. isn't it? Is it a shooter? Um, it's just oh, getting it confused with something else. Yeah, it is a side. It's a side scroll. It's a high school senior. Yeah, it's like a get a little girl on the on the cover. Um, I haven't really played Valis yet. There was I've been busy playing others because there's Valis one and there's Valis three on here as well. Um, they're like side scrolling, sort of like what would you say, kung fu games, sort of thing. Yeah, gauntlet style looking graphics, sort of. Well, not gauntlet. Uh, I don't know. That uh, what would you call it graphically wise? Just that nineties, you know, that early nineties yeah. style graphics. Um, the one I do like is um, uh, there's a pinball one which you actually have been playing actually just then, which was Dino. Where are we? I haven't put these in order on the manual actually because it comes with a manual. D- Dino, uh, Dino Land. Right now, I think I heard of it, but I never played it. And that's actually I played it this afternoon, and that was actually really good fun. Actually, I ended up playing that for quite a while. The only thing that's a bit weird is the. Um, the controls are a bit odd. They sort of like you've got uh well, where where's the controller? You basically got left on the D pad is for the left bumper, and then it's B on the right on the on the controller for the right D you know, for the right bumper. Now you thought it'd just use the top bumpers really, you know, for like they would normally do like most games do. Uh you know, but no, they haven't. Um what was the other one I played? There was another one on there. I'm trying to remember what it is now. There was another one I played. I played it for quite a while. It reminded me of an old, uh, like, v- a Vectr- Vectrex game called Armor Attack. It was called... Um, Gren- uh, Granada. Oh, yeah, that looks quite good. I'm just watching that's on the screen at the moment. Mm, actually, no, no, this, no, sorry, that's not the one. No, that is... Must be Final Zone, then. I can't remember which game I played now on Friday night. Aye. Yeah, I do like the Evercade, and I, and I nearly bought a load of games today. Mm. Um, and then I was like, well, what am I doing? I'm going on holiday next week, and I emptied my basket. Mm. And it's just the games have gone up a little bit, that £18. Yeah, each, I know. I'm off about that. Yeah. I mean, it's only a couple of quid extra, but it's still a couple of quid's a couple of quid when you're buying a few... At, at, well, you, at once, you know what I mean. But um, well, you used to buy two games and it was thirty quid. Yeah. Now you can get you're getting one game, and, and well, if you buy two games, now you're, you're up to nearly forty quid now, and you see yeah. you're literally up nearly a tenner, haven't you? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So, but but you but you know, I, I mean, I still like the Evercade. I seem to be playing more the handheld system recently, just because I'm kind of chilling mm. on the sofa. Uh, playing a little bit of the uh, Namco classics today, you know, like Pat Pat mm. Man and uh, oh, not Ast- no, not um, Z Z Zevius. Oh. Anyway, yeah, yeah, the old, uh, and I do love those old school games. But the but the thing is, you know, I do like the Evercade, but a lot of the games that you can get on the Evercade, you can also get on the Switch as well. Um, apart from the more obscure ones, ob- obviously. Mm. So I've kind of got both those options there. But I think as a collector's thing, I think the Evercade's a great system to collect for because it's just, it's really cool having those cartridges, you mm. know, and, the, and 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 they're all on the shelf. And it's like, it's old school, isn't it? You're like, you look at the shelf and you're like, oh, yeah, you know, I fancy playing, you know, one of these six games that are on this cartridge, yeah? Yeah. You know, and there's some in very nostalgic about that and um just to just 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 kind of going off topic a little bit um today like, i watched um a documentary about the last blockbusters store in america mm. and it was quite interesting 
uh, because they were talking about how people still use this last blockbusters because they were saying like uh, obviously a lot of these people are like you know they're movie buffs and they were like you know there's just so much more to it when it's something physical you can hold in your hand and you put it in and, and then you watch the movie a bit like how people feel with vinyl and cds and stuff with music right and i don't know uh, i used I, I to think... walk into the video store and see what new releases were out yeah yeah and, and, you know, yeah and it's talking to people you know the staff and all that sort of stuff and yeah and and i think with the evercade it's kind of similar because you've got the physical item however you are ordering the the item online but i think it's just the, the act of you know you're picking up off the shelf and you've got like there's a few games on the cartridge and so you only your, your selection is very small if that makes sense right unlike game pass netflix or whatever you know you sometimes feel very lost in the hundreds and hundreds of titles movies or whatever that that are available to you in that moment and and you kind of spend a lot of time looking of at what to play watch or listen to instead you've got this physical item with a you know a very limited amount of games on in it it just i don't know it simplifies things right but, and it but just, the, other, the, yeah. the, the other thing just to say on that is, is when you went into blockbusters right oh, i like blockbusters day, i love yeah I, well i didn't i must say i used to get pissed off at blockbusters back in the day because the prices started going up a little bit more didn't they on yeah the dvds yeah, yeah. um and it was, and also they destroyed a lot of the little independent video shops, which did piss me off because they, yeah, some of they them, did. And I mean, that was the one thing I did enjoy about the eighties is that you used to be able to go into a video shop, and you could go in there and you always found something a bit obscure that yeah. you didn't really know about. Whereas now today we live in a day and age where you've got your Netflix and stuff, and you're you are really sort of channeled. You you don't really yeah. get the choice of what you want to look for because your channel down a path of what they want you to watch, like oh, number one in the charts is this and the rest yeah. of it. And you've got to then, you've got to sort of go down a rabbit hole yourself, but you're only limited to what Netflix or Amazon have put on there for you. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of stuff even now that I want to watch, but I can't. And the only way I probably could watch it is if I illegally download it. Now it's not yeah. something I want to do. Um, but back in the day, you were always able to, go into a video shop and I mean that was how Terminator did so well I mean it it it, it went to the cinema it flopped no, oh, no one was interested in ter yeah yeah Terminator was the biggest it, it just didn't do nothing at the cinema there's, there's so many films that mm. basically just exploded to look like Tremors is another example mm. of a classic film that was just such a big hit on home video but yeah it crushed at the cinema yeah basically. I think Shawshank Redemption which is like Oh, that's a classic one. one. Like, yeah, yeah. That like tanked so bad at the cinema, and I actually, I think I actually lost money. It did so bad. Wow. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then that. I, made up I just that. think like, like audiences weren't really ready for that kind of a film because yeah. it was kind of one of the originals. <laughs> you you ended up having like the Green Mile and other yeah. adaptations come out, but yeah. But going back to Terminator, I mean, Arnie was very, very, you know, early days. He was not even known. I mean, that was probably the film that got him on the radar, really. Yeah, that yeah. Film. And then yeah. he did, you know, it was the Conans as well that were after that. But it was, yeah, it didn't do nothing at the cinema. And I remember you go into the video shop, it's like, oh, yes, let's check this one out. I've heard about this. A couple of mates have been telling me about this. And it's like, oh, wow, this is unbelievable. And that was the other thing as well. When you went into the video shop, and you rented a DVD or a video, you know, video if it was the early yeah, days. Just back then, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, were, um, you were invested to watch that film. Now, you put a film on Netflix, you watch it, you watch it for 10 minutes, oh, fuck it, I don't like this. Yeah, that's it, yeah. And then yeah, what happens yeah. is you end up just sitting there, you can have it at times where you're just sitting there going through film, 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 yeah, film. Yeah, And then in the end, or you put the film on, you're sitting there, you're on your phone. So you're not actually watching the film at all. You're on your phone. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which is what people do. I'm laughing because you know. it's true. Yeah, but back in the day, you didn't have a phone and you wouldn't be sitting there reading the paper, would you, while watching the no, film? Would you? No. Because you would, yeah. cause you've spent money on that. You went out and paid, paid three quid for that to watch it yeah, for the night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And then you're thinking... Three times if you could. 
Yeah, and then you thought, oh, oh, I might be able to get another viewing in the morning. Yeah, especially <laughs> back in the day, quickly rewind the tape, we'll get another viewing in. <laughs> yeah. Be back by 10 in the Dropbox. There's one I used to walk to, like it's near where my it's where my high school is now when I was younger and I used to sell or you know rent um Mega Drive cartridges as well and stuff like that. All right, I used yeah. to go in there and used to get told off because um did you used to get told off when you take the tape back and didn't rewind it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Rewind your tapes. Things <laughs> like that. And they used to give you those like was it those huge plastic cases as well, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. Yeah. Puffy ones. Yeah. yeah. That was that that was I think it was just better because now we know when films are coming out before they've even started making them don't we yeah, yeah. yeah. it's kind of but like... it's the same with game shops right just going back into gaming you know i remember back in the day before game took over everything right you know mm-hmm. in, in in my local town there was two independent game shops and and a game station right so three game shops you know and then and those independent game shops were awesome because they, you know, they get games in early, they'd sell them to you early, and you know you could just go in there because they were big gamers themselves. You know, you could just go go in there, and I spent hours in there just chatting to them about games and yeah, asking their advice and stuff. And you would trust them because they were actual gamers themselves, right? And uh, you know, and those were the days before all the internet was a big thing, so you couldn't go and watch video reviews or anything like that, right? Um, you know, and then obviously game took over everything, all the other well, little yeah. stores shut down. Um, and it just becomes very corporate and sterile, you know, and, it, mm. and now everything's yeah. online, isn't it? You know, I mean, I wouldn't go into game to buy anything now unless it's on sale because everything is so fucking expensive. Yeah, I mean, I went in game on Saturday because uh, we've got a, a lo- where well, it's in the sports direct now, isn't it? So it's upstairs. I'm, I'll be honest. The advertising for it's awful. I mean, yeah. and I've been past a few sports directs. They've just got a little tiny sign in there. If you didn't know that was there, you'd just walk past it. Yeah, and I don't. I'm not sure how long they're going to survive the way they're they're running this business because they're upstairs. They're at the back of a shop. Yeah, and where they used to have a main shop on the high street. Now it's only word of mouth or proper gamers, but the casual woman, you know, that's going out shopping for a son for Christmas is probably going to miss the place and yeah. go somewhere else. And I've noticed that even places like Tesco's now they're not selling games or DVDs anymore. Uh, they, they, they're getting out. The only place that's still left selling that stuff is ASDA. Sainsbury's have pulled out. Tesco's have pulled out. It's because it's the the digital which all the digital wankers sorry if you're out there and you're one of them yeah um, sorry they want this is what they, yeah but this is what they want they want this we don't want physical we don't want we don't want money either we want all cashless yeah, society yeah, 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 yeah. i still think we should have choice um regardless i don't have a problem if you want to play digital that's fine i yeah. still i buy stuff digital but i like a choice yeah. the problem is we're going down this route now where we're losing that choice because it's you know you're seeing it every day banks are shutting down yeah so where must if i want to go and speak to a bank manager i've got to go 20 miles up the road have i you know or i've got to sit on a phone and speak to some yeah. man in japan or, or asia or whatever it is you know but going back to game anyway is that you go in there now and it's just i don't know it's just it doesn't feel the same anymore it, it's it, there's no yeah, you used to walk into a game shop, and it's well, you still do if you go into old retro shops, and it was just that sense of excitement. Oh, wow, look at that game there! Yeah, the yeah, yeah. And you judge everything by, you by, go by in the now box, and you just you? feel the manic depression as soon as you're walking through the front door. <laughs> yeah, it's just like <laughs> slip my wrist. There we go. <laughs> so, then, I, I know. Yeah, go on. I, was say, Stan, I remember when I. When it used to be, it was used to be EB before you know electronics. Oh, oh yeah, I yeah, loved yeah, EB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I used to like be really pally with the people in there. It sounded like cheers, but you'd walk in and they'd know your name and they'd talk to yeah, you and yeah. stuff like that. Mm. I remember when I went in there. I think well, this was like two thousand and one, um, and Grand Theft Auto Three had come out. I didn't know it was coming out. I you know I didn't know it was three D. I wouldn't say it was like a stealth release, but mm. you wouldn't know unless you. I bought magazines and stuff like that that it was even yeah. well, no, so I just bought it on a whim you know so can you just imagine a game of that caliber coming out today and mm. not knowing is in advance it's coming out and the, you know reordering it and stuff like that and the only problem is all this 
Digital, uh, get your pre-orders in now, like, so we can gauge the interest in the <laughs> yeah, game. It's it, like, yeah. what the fuck? This is just using another market tactic mm. to try and get sales data. You've pre-ordered it's it. Never it's, pre-ordered. Yeah. it's never accurate. It's never accurate. You do a digital one. Yeah, you do a survey on social media. It's not accurate. It's accurate to however that social media is and what people engage with it. It's not accurate to the real world. Because there's yeah. a lot of people that aren't on social media or on certain social medias mm. where these surveys are conducted. Uh, yeah. but... It's just not worth digital at the moment because all the games are broken on launch anyway. So I think they're going to end... Because they want everything digital, so they just cut out the middleman completely. But like I say, if the games are going to be as broken on launch as they have been, a lot of people just aren't going to bother buying at day one, are they? Well, there's also that, and also the fact being is, what happens if you buy the game and you don't like it? I mean, I didn't really think much of Deathloop. Bought it, and I paid 50 quid for it, and I sold it for 45. Well, that's, you know, so it's all very well saying, oh, how did you think? So basically, if I bought it digital, that's 50 quid just down the pan. Well, well, actually... Well, no, it was. I think it was more expensive. Like you usually get the physical copy cheaper than the digital version, and, you can have, and it's actually game. worth something. It's like if it's on money, Steam, it's if you played it for less than two two hours and had it for less than two weeks, you can get a refund. Yeah, Same you can't on do that Xbox. Xbox. Yeah, what, Xbox two, two hours. Xbox. Um, two yeah. hours and so so many. Or I think it's two weeks as well. Yeah. So that's how I uh, refunded Grand Theft Auto Five because forced you to have the online version and stuff like that to even play the single player mm. I was like no I'm not having that I don't want to, I don't want the online stuff and it took it take like five minutes to get into the story and you have to go through loads of pages of adverts and trying to sell you shark guards <laughs> mm. well definitely it was PlayStation wasn't it only and but as I say, I mean, luckily, I didn't actually... I mean, it's an okay game, but it wasn't, for me, it wasn't what yeah, I yeah. wanted as a game. I mean, there's people out there that love the game, and they're probably, you know... But it just didn't work with me. I just couldn't get into it. I tried, and I tried. And then in the end, as I say, I mean, there's not many games I've sold. I don't really sell games, but not new. No, I very rarely do. Like, but I've sold two games. I've sold Deathloop, and I've sold Ratchet & Clank. The only reason I sold Ratchet & Clank is because I knew damn well that game would drop in price. And if I ever wanted to play it again, because I did finish it, I'll yeah. be out to pick it up for peanuts anyway in five years' time. Yeah. It'll probably be on PS Plus at some point. Um, but, uh, yeah, like you, Darren, I'm a collector. I collect games. I mean, my daughter says, that, she says, oh, you are a collector. You collect video yeah. games. You know? I said, yeah. I said, but I won't collect a video game if it's an online-only game. You know, if it's an online-only game, I'm going to be a bit like, do I buy it or do I just wait until it's cheap, like Gran Turismo? The game looks great. I'm not really in. A, I'm not at the right time to play it, but also it's put me off because it's, it's an online only game. So, yeah. You know, but that's just me. You know, everyone yeah. has a different you know opinion. So yeah. going back to what we were talking about, the Evercade. Yeah. yeah, I was quite. I was quite impressed with that uh, cartridge. I mean, there was another one that came out. There was a Gremlins collection. Yeah, yeah. The only thing, it only had six games on it. So, and I've noticed that the Evercade, they they bring out cartridges that have quite a lot of games on it. Because I think, I mean, this one's got about, I think it's about nine. I think it is a, I don't know, 12. 12 games on it. Wow, but you that's do get decent. Some, yeah, but you get some of the cartridges that only come out with bloody six on it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got the indie one with only two games on it section as well. Hmm. Is that the Tang- Tanglewood one? Yeah, 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 yeah. I really like that one, actually. Mm. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, it is a great system. I do, I, I mean, I am having a lot of fun with it. It's, um, I need to, it's, it's the usual thing, though. You need to find the time to sit down, whereas yeah, when of I course. I, home, I just turn the PlayStation on. Um, yeah. But, no, it's good. So I'll carry on playing it. I, I put a post that I know saying on the Facebook group earlier about... Some of the game are, are some of the games getting obsolete now. No, well, I found those games that you were on about on Funstock, mm. mate. So right, okay, so yeah, I just I, is this a ploy by them at some? Because I know there is supposed to be a couple that are going obsolete, which is the Namco ones. They're the ones that you can't play on uh, on, the, on the home console. Yeah, enough. that's yeah, that's why I bought them. <laughs> yeah. I got them a couple of months ago. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, th this is the one thing that, that does make you think, is this going to happen? Because you've got to think, they've had to license all these games. You'll probably get away with, it with the indie stuff because it's, you know, yeah. probably got a good... But if it's a proper license from a company or whatever, especially the way everything keeps changing at the moment, you know, next thing you know, a company goes and buys another company and then they want the rights for it, isn't there? I mean, yeah. I, I see the things on Facebook about, you know, oh, let's have the... Um, I don't know, you know, one of the Activision games, well, it ain't going to happen. It's owned by Xbox now. Yeah. Or, oh, let's have the Konami collection. Well, that ain't going to happen because it's Konami and Konami don't let them go on anything else. So, you know, it's uh, it'd be interesting to see where it is. In Konami the... could make some really good money if they allowed oh, some no. of their back catalogue onto things like the Evercade. No. They yeah. really could. I oh, know yeah. they could. I mean, there's big rumours going around that Sony's interested in buying them. But, I mean, at the, the moment, the rumours for Sony on everything at the moment, it seems like because Microsoft go and buy someone big, they're, they're hoping that Sony do. But I don't know if it's true or not. Yeah. So who knows on that one? But there's always rumours every day. It's probably just, just to get clickbait. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, you're right on the Konami. I mean, I mean, there's even stuff on the th on the 360, isn't there? Like, you know, the Castlevanias and... Oh man, it'd be nice if we saw some of them again, wouldn't it? But oh yeah, but, uh, that's it. It's all I played anyway. Awesome. But, oh, 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 just a quick thing. Yeah, sorry. Well, that's fine. Um, car boot time. <laughs> oh yeah, is car are the car boots back in action? Well, they've been well. My ones are on action in action anyway. It's on all year round. Right. Uh, they have all the, all the big ones have started. I don't go to my one doesn't start till next week anyway. Um. I had a bit of a result last weekend at the car boot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, literally, a um, woman had a um, – and also my rival was at the car boot as well. He's basically a guy that goes there, and he's a pain in the ass because he fucking knows what to look Every for. Every car boot you go to, you always have a rival, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I know. But they're a pain in the ass. Well, sometimes – yeah, but he's really sort of – he just always seems to be there in the right place at the right time. It's like you could stand there in front of a woman for 10 minutes and she hasn't got any video games. As soon as you walk off and then you look behind, he's there and he's picking out a load of games. It's like, where does he how, how does he get them from her when she didn't have anything? It's like, <laughs> you, know, you want to bash his head in. Um, <laughs> so, but this week, uh, last week, sorry, it was my time. I thought so good because <laughs> the week before he got the SNES the week before. Um, but this time it was my time. And basically... I'd already gone up to the woman. She had an Xbox 360 on the table. And I said, oh, how much is that? She goes, oh, 30 quid for all these games. And I looked at it for me. I don't, they're not, the 360s are worthless at the moment. It's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and um, I wandered off. And when I walked back past again, sort of 10 minutes later, I noticed there was a black thing on the table. Um, and I thought, and it was, it was sort of hidden. It wasn't, it was on the table, just the console. And I've looked at it, ooh, and it was a Wii U. I was like, oh, how much is the Wii U there? And she says, oh, it's, um, there's loads more with it. I went, oh, right, really? She goes, oh, yeah, there's, there's a load of games all in the bag. I haven't put them on the table. I just put the console on the table. She, has, she had a Wii U with yeah. loads of games. Now, we're talking Splatoon, uh, Breath of the Wild, all this kind of stuff on the Wii U. So... And uh, oh, even it had all the controllers as well. I mean, the controllers on the Wii U, they're quite good. You know, the uh, yeah. Pro Controller, they're quite good money on their own. She only wanted... and then, Now, she weren't going to be cheap, cheap. She was £60, which isn't a lot of money for a Wii U. Not when you get a load of games. You probably make your yeah. money back on the games. But then as I picked up the Wii U on the table, I then looked to the right of the table, and she had three Game & Watches sat there on the table. No way. And I said, how much are they? She goes, oh, five or each. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I picked all three up, and then the other guy turned up just at that point. It was like in his face. The original oh. ones? Yeah, the original Mario. Wow. Mario. Oh. I've, got, I've got, she had two Mario. Where are we? They're here. She had two Mario brothers, which is, you know, they, they're the two, the, slight, the, the side case ones that flip open. Right. Yeah, so, is that the one where they're doing the milk crate? So I had that one, like the two-player. I haven't put any batteries. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I haven't put any batteries in them yet because I can't find my batteries. Um, they're in good nick apart from them missing the battery covers. It's, they're always missing uh. battery covers, Game & Watches. And then she had um, the other one, which, again, has got batteries in it, but they don't bloody work, is Chef. 
which is just a single uh, Game & Watch. A little bit beaten up. It's got a few dents on the actual metal, but it's it's complete and it's not cracked. And I don't actually own Chef because um, I have the other two because I have about 35 Game & Watches. Bloody hell, um, dude. Yeah, I've got a few. They're all from car boots over the years. I've, I've probably bought three or four on eBay. Well, not recently. I haven't bought any for 10 years, 15 years probably. Um but they've all been car boot finds. But I must admit, I haven't found a game and watched a car boot for probably at least six, seven years, or could even be longer now. Because you got to think they're the, they're now at that age where if anyone sees one of them on <laughs> the table, they're just gone. Yeah, you know, it's like you know. But I just couldn't believe that I was just there at the right time and the right place to find them. So yeah, you know. Whereas like this week, I haven't really found much this week. I've got a few Spectrum games, but. <laughs> Um, that's the draw, thing. mate. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I love the I love the buzz. It's like being Indiana Jones, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I don't think I'd ever lose it. I go along, always find little bits and bobs. I find stuff even for myself, really. You know, which is nice. And I, I, I mean, I still look for PS2 games, to be honest. Wow. Yeah. Um, only because I don't know. I just do. I just like the PS2. I mean, what did I pick up today? I got. I got a uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game today. Mutant Melee. Uh, Mutant Melee. All right. <laughs> yeah. Is it Melee? Melee? Melee. 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 Yeah. Um, never played it. I don't know if anyone else remembers that game from back in the day. No. And then the other one was um, Wipeout Fusion. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I never played. That's another one. I, I think I remember having this back in the day because... I remember the music because it says on the bottom here it's got all like stuff like Future Sound of London and stuff like that. So that'd be quite cool to yeah. listen to. All right. I just quite like the old PS2 stuff, I must admit. Yeah. Oh, right. nice. Right. But yeah, I just thought I'd give a little head update. So, yeah. Awesome, man. That's it. Me done. That's great. Uh, what about you then, Nick? Well, I've played a few this week. Not not many, like five or six, but I finished um, Shadow of the Colossus. I finished that like. Oh, nice. Oh, so, brilliant. Brilliant. I, 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 that is a brilliant game. I really enjoy. It. I can see what that's why a lot of people said this was like like their favourite game of all time. Mm. You know, especially, I mean, it's an old game. I mean, this is the PS4 version, but I think this came out in two thousand and five. It's a PS3 game originally, wasn't it? Oh, sorry, PS2, PS2 game. It's PS2, PS2 then it yeah. came out on PS3 and again. Yeah, I own it on all three systems and I never played it. <laughs> <laughs> you should get on it, mate. You're I mean, mad. I might know spoil the hell out of it, but I mean, I think a lot of us know the spoilers. What I mean, can I spoil it, Webby? You don't mind? I don't do give you? a shit, mate. No, I don't mind either. No. Yeah. I have it played a bit of it. Of a trouble of a, with it with the camera. It thing. is. You're on about the ending, aren't you? That's basically yeah. pretty fucked I mean, up. I was aware of the ending, and I've never played it because that sort oh, of no. sort oh. of comes out. Basically, the end, like just before the last Colossus, you, know, you think I can't make this jump. Why can't I make this jump? I was like, oh, I know, I'll, I'll jump on my horse. Mm. Then I jump, I'm like, I don't know it was coming. And I got right to the end and all the bridge which I jumped on started collapsing. And the horse had looked sort of a hissy fit because he was going to fall. But then he like, threw me off to save me and the horse ended up falling to his death. Right. And his little, little man was like, no. Oh, and he's like looking over and seeing his horse like falling away down to the floor. And I was like... Oh no! I knew that was coming. I just like it was just obvious because like I think that this is like the first one. Anything like this in a game now where they give you a pet, they're going to kill it, aren't they? <laughs> what they do? I think they killed your dog in Fable. They they just kill everything because they try to get you know. And I'm like, oh, oh never mind. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I'm like, never mind. You you control like crap anyway. And I just kept running into like boulders and stuff. So I'm pretty sure he had concussion anyway at this point. So I probably do. <laughs> and and the last boss, I mean, this was like the biggest one. It wasn't of the bosses were really difficult once you worked out, but this one had to get to him first. I was like, when he just kept like hitting me with fireballs from afar, and then I was like, oh, I see. You had to like come between cover, back into a hole in a trench and stuff like that, and get on. You killed him, and then like, the the main spoiler was like after killing the last one. As it turns out that the losses you were killing were actually the good guys, and the people yeah. who told you to kill him <laughs> were the bad guys. Oh, and, no. they you, and, and, and I noticed that after you killed the last one, you teleport back to like the temple where your girlfriend is 
she's laying because she's unconscious, like dead or lost her soul or whatever it is. And the good uh, guys actually turn up because they find out that someone's there killing the Colossus or something. Right. And and when I turn up there, I'm surrounded by like the 16 bad enemy ghost things. And I'm like all grey and got horns coming out of me and got red eyes. I was like, oh no, I've turned into a monster. And uh, then I do turn into like a giant monster and try to kill everything. Oh, wow. And oh. you chase them f- off. Okay. And you... You play as like the monster, as like basically the colossus sort of smoke monster. You turn around and try to swipe and kill them. They basically do something, and uh, you stuck back into the temple, and they like crush the the uh, the big bridge, so no one can get back to that area again. Uh-huh. You land in this pool of water. You think, oh, I'm dead. That's bad news. And um, but then your girlfriend wakes up. Oh, it's better late than never, I suppose. You know, I've done all this for her. <laughs> Killed all these monsters. And she's woke up late, lazy mare. And and she sort of walks. She's like, oh, where's my boyfriend gone? He's there somewhere. And then, and then another spoiler, your horse turns up, like walks around the corner, started limping. Oh, what? Like, oh. Okay. So the horse is back. So you're like, oh, that's good. And then you walk, and then she can hear like a baby crying. Like, Why could she hear a baby crying? And she goes back to the big pool which is at the start of the game you're in the pool as a baby for whatever reason and but you've still got little horns on your head it's bizarre. So it's, okay. it is bizarre and it turns out that I mean this is what people were telling me in the chat basically this is like a re- really big prequel to Ico oh yeah, yeah I was, I was just, I was just saying, have man. you played that I've never played, I've played Ico. Ico yet no, just wondering. Apparently that one's a little bit more clever. Well, this one's... The, the PS2 and PS3 version has got really, like, tricky, clunky controls, but the PS4 version, they updated the controls a bit to make it look a lot easier. Because I think you had to, like, press two buttons to jump and then hold a button and press another button to dodge and stuff like that. Right. They just made it a lot more simple. So I don't know if that's weird now that because... Her boyfriend's a baby, so I don't know if she's in trouble. But, oh, you know that—that that yeah. was a really good game. I enjoyed that. That's not. I mean, you can bang it out in ten hours, but that's definitely worth it. And I was watching people like speed run it and do all these like weird glitches and stuff. How they can do these colossus in like twenty seconds and stuff like that. Mm. They do things like they'll get onto its ankle where you're not supposed to get onto. And do a weird jump, and he'll somehow kick you flying like eighty feet up into the air, and then you land on his head. Oh, well, stuff yeah. like that. So that you know, there's still a lot of people playing like this today. So, mm. you know, I'll spoil it, Webby. You should definitely give it a go, mate. Yeah, like well, it. we'll not maybe find some time after I'm back from holiday. Uh, we'll see. I, I, I mean, it's only I, like seventeen years, so you might as well leave it. Um, yeah, you know. I've tried to play it. I I struggle. I only started on the first section. And um, I don't know, it didn't grab me. Maybe it's just that I was in the right, wrong frame of mind because you can have that on games. Yeah. I think the other thing as well is never, I know I worked it out that you had to use a sword to actually tell you where you were going. Yeah. But I think I had a problem in my game where it glitched and it didn't tell me where to go. Uh, so you put the sword up. And I it... thought I had that. Basically, if you're in an area where there's no sun or the, nun, the sun's mm. shining, it doesn't it just like it doesn't show you where you're supposed to go? Yeah, uh, I, I I need to give it another go. I mean, I tried the the one after the Last Guardian, and I struggled with the Last Guardian because of the it, the camera. It was like having a fight with the camera all the time, all which right. is probably the reason yeah, why I've I gave some up. Some people that. play that. I was going to play the uh, Last mm. Guardian, but I heard that's a bit more iffy because, like I say, it's not just controlling your own character. You're trying to control mm. the big bird dog thing to actually yeah. do. Off and apparently he's a bit clunky, but yeah, it was it was an, it's one of those where it's an old game that's just been um, moved from console to console, <laughs> really. Because they, <laughs> yeah. never, they never sort of well, it took them so many years to make the bloody thing. I mean, I, I listened to the podcast last week. Is are they actually gone now? The studio that made that. Don't know if they're gone. I don't think they've done anything since Last Guardian. Yeah, they they, they have. I think disbanded, and like some of the main people from that studio have gone separate directions. I believe. Any idea what they 
what they've gone to do? I don't know. Probably uh, what they want to do. Probably what they want to do. Yeah, yeah. Because basically, like, they still wanted to make a load of different games. And obviously, mm. this was during the time where, like, we don't really want to make experimental games. We just want a, a, a formula type of a game. Because, mm. like, you can say how successive, obviously, like, God of War and Horizon and all those are. They're all the same type of game. They're all a cinematic, open world, go around, explore, third person experience. Mm. But yeah, no. Really. Things, I don't know if we're no. Games like that or new ideas and stuff. But I suppose you've got to look to the indie scene, really, to for that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, they've kind of taken over with that kind of side of things. If they get popular and something's good, then the AAA studios will copy it and just. It, it must be harder these days because of the money, though, isn't it? Because you know it's not cheap anymore to make a video game, is it? Um, so. Whereas, I mean, I know they say, oh, yeah, but the technology gets better. Yeah, the technology gets better, but it still comes with a premium, doesn't it? So, I mean, we we you see it anyway. I mean, you think how many games were released on the 360 PS3 era? Loads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas now it's nothing like what we yeah. used to get um, because of cost. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, you should get some right shit. You know, you think you go you go back a generation before that to the PS2. I think the PS2's probably got the biggest library ever of games. Exactly. You're going on back to the days when uh, they actually sold video games in petrol stations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good old days. You'd end up with your WiiWare and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Random Wii titles, educational weird things oh, yeah. you've never seen. My horse and me. <laughs> Barbie's Horse Adventures. Sh- shovelware, yeah. don't they? Like well, yeah, me. there was more. There was a lot more shovelware back in the early days, and we don't see as much shovel- shovelware now. So, um, I mean, there still is stuff, but not physical. M- mostly digital these days, isn't it? Uh, it's probably because they know they're damn well. There was no one's going to actually print that off as a, you yeah, know, as a case. Mm. Well, yeah, you obviously, if you're releasing something brand new, you're not going to be like, yeah, we'll produce 20 million copies of that. Yeah, just <laughs> stick in the bin next to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that ET's gone up in value now. Oh, so, fucking oh, hell, yeah. Since they dug it up out the fucking. I know. Uh, that, I, can't, I still can't believe that they found all those cartridges in the dump because they went into the dump years and years, like 20 odd years ago. And it was always that rumour, wasn't it? And they actually managed to find where they had dumped them. That's yeah, it, that's was just... it that went there? Was it Xbox? Yeah, it was Microsoft, wasn't it? Because I remember watching it, the... Was um... it Major Nelson? Well, they should have put him in the old... <laughs> when they put the ET out. Yeah, the ET cartridges fused into his arms. They, sh- they should have dug the right. hole out, got... Got ET out, said, and then someone <laughs> go up behind Major Nelson and just ooh, kick. Oh, oh, he's falling in the hole! Quick, bury him! <laughs> so, there we go. So that's done. Then another game I finished as well. I didn't have much left on that. About an hour or so. It was um, Pokemon Legends Arceus, but the Arceus. completed it. Arceus, Arceus, whatever we up the Arceus. The Arceus, yeah. Arceus, yeah. <laughs> but I finished that now, like. Full, complete, like got all the Pokedex full as well. And the last, which is weird because it, like I say, it, it shows the credits, but you're not actually finished the game. Right, to actually yeah. see Arceus, you have to hit 241 of 242 and then go to the last area and you fight him in battle. These battles they're putting, these weird ones where you're actually battling as Pokemon at the start, it's just you versus the Pokemon. You're just running around, like throwing bean bags of pixie dust at them for whatever reason i don't know but this last battle which a lot of people said it's just, it's just really difficult because it's kind of like a dark souls boss fight yeah but the game is just not as clever you know of like collision detections mm. and stuff like that so he does a move where he hits you with lightning got a roll at the precise time and even though if you do that sometimes it still hits you for whatever reason i don't know and then he stamps his feet on the floor because it's like this weird floating horse thing so he stamps his feet on the floor and you get the old you know like the thing on the floor that you have to jump over 
yep. and stuff like that. And if it hits you once, then it will hit you again and again multiple times before you can even stand up. And the only way you can sort of cheese it is like every time you die, you can say, I continue, or you continue, and you can also continue with the boss's health where it was on the last battle. Oh, okay. Kind of, but it only goes down in like quarters. So you have yeah. to do one quarter, and then you can restart the battle, you know, down to like three quarters, you know, half and stuff like that. But there's a few moves in it which is crap because you just cannot avoid them. Yeah. It's just clunky because it's like, but you can press a button and lock on to the guy to make it easier to sort of it. But when you lock on to him, you can't run. So you, you lock on to him so you could like hit him better and see him better, but then you can't run. So it's kind of pointless of doing that. Then there's a move which he does near the end where he makes like the whole area you're, pla like, you're fighting him in who's like pink, apart from the little area where he is. If you're in the pink section and don't get to where he is and hit him before that, it'll hit you again. Right. But if you've just if he just starts that and you're too far away, you can't get to it. And then basically it'll hit you three times and pretty much kill you. But what you, what you, the trick you have to do is you have to go to the um main area where you the your um the village and you can buy these um charms so you can get hit more times before you pass out and die as a you know as the human not the pokemon so that's basically what you have to do so if you don't know to do that i don't know if it's possible to do that without getting hit okay that was a bit cheap and i don't know why they put this weird sort of dark soulsy bosses in but but that's done now so that's complete and uninstalled that's good i think that's about 95 hours i put wow. into that come on so I finished that on. I actually finished that last night on stream, about like an hour. So then the chat said, "Oh, I said, what should we play now? Should we play a bit of Mario Kart?" And I said, "No, play Fortnite with us. Play Fortnite oh, with us." I was God. Like, oh, so I played oh. Fortnite. Oh. Oh. The girls on the stream, they were like, "Play Fortnite with us, Nick." So I'm like, "All right, I'll play Fortnite." And, I mean, that's, it's a laugh because um, I mean, any multiplayer games really, if you're in party chat. And you're talking, having a laugh, having a few drinks. Any game's playable, really, isn't it? Wow. Well, plus, with well. all this, but they've took um, next. Took, <laughs> oh, I've got finished. But they've took the build. Look, there's modes in it now where you can't do the building stuff. Yeah, next. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I've spent money on it though. I've bought a Joker skin, so I'm, I'm oh, now the Joker God. with a big hand. Fucking hell, man. <laughs> I can't be I can't be a default. Everyone keeps calling me default in the game. They're being mean to me. Uh, Nick. Yeah. Uh, Nick. I, your 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 <laughs> gaming credibility has gone right down the pan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do I ever have gaming credibility. <laughs> Never had well, credibility. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right, and, then, so, and today I've fired up the old Sega Saturn again. I've been playing that a lot as well, and I've been playing um. Battle Arena to Senden. Oh yeah, that's on the PS1 that is. Yeah, but this is um to Senden Remix. I think yeah. this came out about six months after the PS1 version, and I don't know what they did. I think they just done a few upgrades, a few extra modes and stuff like that. And it's not it is to be honest, it's kind of crap. It's re I remember it being better back in the day. It's just a bit clunky, it's a bit weird. And it's like when you're fighting, because you can like move instead of you know normal 2d fighting you can use the triggers to sort of roll or move in and out of um racks or whatever that is so sometimes you're fighting someone then they move and you still keep like trying to punch where they were if you see what i mean so it's, it's weird and plus the final boss on that what an absolute bastard he was i was fighting him and basically, you just do some this cheesy like fireball move, which is just take your health down like halfway. And if you can, and he hits you twice with that, and you're basically dead. Mm. And there's like say nothing you can do about it. But I think the only thing good is this: like there's some voice acting, and in between the battles, there's like a little story. They like talk, you know, like comic books where they'll be standing next to like most of the Japanese games, and um, so they're talking each other and like 
the woman I was playing has Sophia because obviously she's got giant tits and she's in like a little swimming costume thing. I was playing as her. Yeah, as I say, no, no. Oh yeah, the game was triangle boobs, but like the scenes were like comic book art style, so that was a bit better. Um. Yeah, so that's just like, like said, oh, you thought because I was a woman you wouldn't beat me up? And they're like, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but, you know, that's fun. I mean, I got the second one uh, as well, because they actually made four Toshinden games. The music on them's, like, pretty decent. Mm. The music, like, the time. Fight, I mean, cause like I said, it's Ford's fighting, and then some of the moves are quite fun and but it just makes you just remember how many fighting games they were back then. I think that was probably one of the biggest genres of going back on like PS1, Sega, Saturn time. But busy, busy time back then for you know these kind of games. Anyway, I mean yeah. I've got quite a few. I've got you know like rival schools, all that kind of stuff. Um, they used to bring a game out every year, didn't they? Mm. And for about four or five year period, they brought everything out. But the next game I played was. Even worse than that, which was um, Street Fighter the movie. Oh, oh what the video oh, game? Video oh yeah, game. yeah. I, I'll be honest. I wanted this many years ago, and I never did find a copy. Was it on the Saturn? Sorry, yeah, on the Saturn. I think yeah. you get it on Saturn, and you can get it on PS One as well. I think it yeah. is PS One. I've never been able to find it cheap. I must admit. Don't spend money on it, mate, because it is really bad. Right. Okay. I mean, well, I mean. It's weird because they've, they've gone like Mortal Kombat, you know, where they've like scanned in the characters from the film, mm. you know, like Van Damme and Kylie Minogue and stuff like that. Um, the normal arcade that. mode is fine. I mean, I only really ever play as Ryu and Ken on most of these games, but so I played through the arcade mode as Ryu. wasn't too bad. I pretty much went through it first time, no problem. But then they had the story mode. Follows the um, movie, sort of. It, it's another one of those where you know it'll play FMVs of from the film. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it goes through the bit, but it's like, it's, but it's not just that. You select where you want to go next. So it's like it'll play a little clip and it'll say, "Oh, do you want to go to this bit or do you want to go to this part of the film?" And you can choose like a route of where you want to go. So do you want to go as here and fight Blanca or do you want to go here and fight this, What you know, stuff like that. So it's not too bad. The only problem is like, there's a there's like a 30-minute time limit to beat the game. Oh, okay. It, it counts down for, you know, so whilst you're fighting, it goes down from 30 to zero. And if you get to zero, it's which I did, it's game over. Ah. And then it comes up, oh, well, what happened was um, N. Bison, because you didn't, like, rescue, because, like, the, the story of the film is you have to get in and rescue all the hostages and whatever and get out, beat up N. Bison. But because I never got in there, that the government just paid him off. Right. Government, oh, well, they paid him $20 million, and two years later, he re- Bison returned with an army of super soldiers, you know, like Blanca. So we're doing, you know, like super blankers and took over the world. I was like, oh, great. That's, that's a nice ending. Uh, I mean, it's just weird because um, for a Street Fighter game, irrelevant of which one you would say, you'd always say they play pretty well. Yeah. I was like, this does not play well at all. <laughs> the hit detection or the collision detection is terrible. Like sometimes, and chat was saying it as well, they would hit me, and they would be at least a foot away from me, and their uh, punch would still register. And, and basically, it's the story, though. You had to play as Guile throughout <laughs> the whole thing. And I blame Van Damme, because obviously he plays Guile. He's a terrible character. Couldn't do hardly any of the moves, and a lot of his moves are crap. Yeah. I was basically kicking him, and the game was saying, no, you didn't. I was like, but I did. And a lot of his punches just like punch straight up in the air when like the one's there. I got stuck on, I want to say, um, uh, Saget. I got stuck on him. I think it was Saget because basically a lot of my moves would only hit over his head. Right. I couldn't hit him even if I got right on top of him. I couldn't hit him. Oh, it's just really annoying. So I was like, ah. Oh. So, like, of the 30 minutes that I needed, you know, that you've got to beat the game. I think I had like eight minutes up to that area and then 20 
two minutes just stuck on this boss fight and I just could not get anywhere near him. And I don't know how many and this was on the obviously the easiest mode you could do. I think there was like eight different stars, so I put it on the easiest of easy modes. And I don't know how many times he just perfected me on that game. I was like, all right, fair enough. But yeah. I mean, it's a good idea. I mean, I'm surprised they haven't done stuff like this a lot more since then, you know, but... Because they're always so fucking video. shit, that's why. Yeah, this one was shit. I mean, do it better. You know, because they have done some games. What was it? The Beyond Two Souls and stuff like that. They've had, like, um, Willem Dafoe and stuff yeah. like that. So I have had some. I'm just surprised they haven't done a lot more with video games with actual characters in them, but it's just they pay too much money for the licenses, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Oh, I can notice uh, that time's ticking on anyway. So what's yeah. the next game, mate? The last one which I played after it's just always just, um, Sonic Jam on the Saturn again. Sonic I think I said Jam. that before. It's just like the first four Sonic games, but I played the first Sonic. But because I got the um, I got my Saturn modded, I got the american version which okay, is 60 yeah. hertz it runs faster and better and stuff like that because obviously plus the music is running because what they did with our version they made the music slower didn't they for the 50 hertz version yeah that's actually hard that seems hard to play because it does seem like it's running too fast for what we would remember you know playing the pal version also which is weird they've put the spin dash in the first game as well Okay. Obviously, they had that in the original first yeah. game. Yeah, that is odd. So, so it's just odd. I'm like, I feel like I'm cheating the game and it's running uh-huh. too fast. But I played through and beat that. But that's probably, you know, those sort. I mean, those sort of games are coming out again at some point this year. I think they're remastering them. I think it's the Origins Collection or something. I think they're making them widescreen HD, 60 frames per second, and all that Fucking stuff. Fucking milking but, that cow, aren't they? Bloody hell. Yeah, and, I mean, it's going to be full pros game as well. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. I've got a funny feeling, but I mean, they're still enjoyable. I don't know why they'd need to, but and I'd probably still buy it because I'm that yeah. guy. I was... <laughs> yeah, cool, that, that, that's me done. Awesome, mate. Well, thank you very much. So, what about you, Darren? Uh, only really two games this week. Okay. Um, mainly. Um... People obviously would, didn't listen last week. Wonderlands, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Oh, uh, yeah, so we're playing that. How, how is that? I watched um, what's a video on that. It looks quite good, you know. It is pretty decent. Uh, it's its own thing in its own way. It's kind of more Borderlands. Everything's sort of crunched down, so it falls more in line with like a tabletop RPG kind of aspect thing that's going on. The jokes are hit and miss. Yeah, like I said last week, the the stories, whatever. Um, but the the combat and going around's fine. But you do kind of get bogged down with a ton of like micromanagement because if you're buying stuff out of the vending machine, it's usually quite expensive. Yeah, and you don't get a great deal of money when you're selling weapons. Like I'm only around level thirteen or fourteen or something at the moment. Right. So I'm only sort of getting a couple of hundred gold per item sold and some of the items in the vending machines are about five grand plus wow upwards uh so i'm picking up a ton of stuff and then you're having to constantly run to and fro the machines to flog it to actually get a bit of decent money right um but yeah that gets it eased uh, later on in the game because you can buy a lot of the storage deck upgrades that you can in Borderlands 3. But like I said last week, you equip magic instead of grenades in this one. Uh, You can equip armors, rings, um, melee weapons and stuff, which all have their own stats and are suited to the different classes because you can create your own class in this one per se, or how the character actually looks. Uh, as well yeah. as the class. But yeah, I haven't put in a ton of time with it. Uh, only sort of about sort of four hours or so this week, four or five hours. That's still plenty of time. It's though. one of those so, games so, so, to kind of chip away at. So it does actually play like a proper RPG then? Yeah, like old school, like a tabletop um, RPG? Or yeah. Yeah, you've got like parts where you'll go through open levels and areas and things like that, but then you'll come out of certain zones 
and you'll be on like a top down sort of isometric view of your sort of super deformed character running around on an over map uh -huh. and you can actually interact and do stuff on the over map as well to move into new zones from there it does look good I'll yeah be not got the time to play it. I mean, the only yeah. downside I've heard is level cap, I think, is 40 instead of 50. Hmm. But then there's supposed to be a ton of random sort of like, what's the word where it's like a dungeon that just makes itself or thingy generated dungeons and stuff like end game kind of thing with challenges and whatnot. I think it's the whole thing to it. But I never really thought Borderlands suffered from a lack of an end game anyway. Hmm. Like, it usually takes you quite a long time to go through them unless you're humping it straight out the gate. But then you just try out all the different classes because they all played pretty decently yeah. in the older games. I remember and back then as well, there was a lot of like trophies or achievements or whatnot for using certain abilities from certain characters. That would get you to test them all out. But my main thing this week is I've been putting way more time into Ghostwire Tokyo. Oh, wicked. Hmm. Uh, which has that? been one of the most enjoyable games I've played this year. Wow. Like, I'll get excited every time I go to stick it back on. Oh, fantastic. Kind of. It's not a very long game, though, I was told. It's 20 well, hours. Well, I'm... Or... Hours yeah, you, long, you can, you can, oh, you yeah, can yeah, main, yeah. You can mainline it. I'm at thirty-two and a half hours, I think, Ooh. at the moment. Oh wow! Uh, and I'm a, I've saved. I think it's like fifty-eight percent of the total souls in the city. Hmm. Uh, and I've still got parts of the map to uncover, and I'm still only in, I think, the fourth chapter of the game. I think there's five or six chapters, but there is a point of no return and some pretty fucked up cool stuff has gone on. Like yeah. I've rode uh, um, underground trains out into the, the nether world and got off at a station in the middle of nowhere and fought some giant red woman with a massive pair of scissors. What what game would you say this compares to? Um, That's what I was going to ask. Because, I, I mean, I've seen little bits of I don't really know what it is, as in... I mean, it's, it's a, first uh, person, yeah, first person open world exorcism game, kind of. Right, okay. You weave spells instead of using, you've got like a bow and arrow, which is a bit khaki, it's like a secondary thing, or you'll just use it to maybe eliminate a couple of annoying enemies from range before you go in and start a yeah. conflict. Because mm. you'll get some that will come up and try and give it a bit of fisticuffs, but others will just stand back blasting energy at you non stop. And you kind of want to get rid of them pretty quickly. And is it stealthy or not? You can. Yeah, you can stealth around the whole game. You can work your way around. You've got like a sixth sense mode you can use, uh, which basically pulses the world around you so you can see all the things that shouldn't be in it. But do you have to play it stealthy or could you just uh, go? No, you can go balls to the wall if right. you want. You can charge into stuff or you can try and take it more methodical. You, right. you get a gauge that you can slowly build up the more ore extractions you do, which is your main way of killing enemies. You'll basically punch your holes into their bodies until you can grab the cores and rip them out, hmm. which it, basically it, yeah. turns them into like essence that you can then absorb. Is it? I mean, yeah, it's no. a cool game. I mean, I'm only on Chapter 2. Um, I've not. I've, I've, I've obviously not played it as much as Darren here. Um, however, like I wasn't really sure what to make of this game because I didn't really look up much about it before I picked it up, and it, it has surprised me because the beginning of the game is quite linear, and then you get to a point where it's kind of like right, you're in the city, and there is certain sec there is a lot of sections you can't go to because of kind of like there's like this mist. Then you have to like yeah, it uh, covers the areas. Yeah, yeah, you have to go to these um, what are they called the Tory, the Tory gates. The, the the Tory gates. Yeah, so I've done some of those and it opens up some more areas. 
They're However, kind of like towers in your usual games where yeah. you'll, you'll go there, you'll activate it, and then yeah. basically it removes all of the mist off of yeah. certain areas of the map, so they're now safe to venture into. Yeah, and and but, but what I didn't realise is that there is quite a lot of side stuff to do. So you look at the map and there's quite a lot of side missions you can do, and you go around and there's all these like ghosts and things just floating around, and you've got to kind of absorb them into this kind of object thing and then you have to go to a telephone booth and send them off to this place i don't really understand it but um there's a lot to of 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 those to get and you just kind of happen upon them really and it's all optional yeah so you mm. so i you mean a lot at, of yeah. the game that i've put into it is what a lot of people would call oh, it's just busy work it's doing yeah. the same thing and it's but it's like no, I'm I'm doing shrines and I'm getting prayer beads that increase my attack, um, yeah. and obviously gives me more things. I'm exercising like um, kappas and helping kadamas out, and all these traditional sort of like Japanese spirits and ghosts. And it does portray in the game as you you go through. I like the fact that not all of them are hostile. Yeah. Like, certain ones are, obviously, the ones roaming around the city, like, doing the bidding of whoever it is that's caused this. Yeah. But a lot of the traditional ones, bar a couple of them, um, are kind of helpful. Like, you, you help them out, and they give you stuff as rewards. Um, and there's, like, weird quests that... Have you been into any of the areas where you kind of you can interact and go into another location? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, actually yeah, surprised yeah. that there was actually a few of those in the game. Yeah, there's a couple of them that are quite large as well that you yeah, go into. But 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 what I'm liking about it as well is like, I mean, the gameplay loop is pretty good. I think uh, it's something different. Uh, but also the story is pretty cool from what I've done so far. No, I'm still early in the game. However. It's it, it's kind of making me want to play the game to 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 know more of what's going on, uh, and you know, and uh, it's interesting. And, and and as I said last week, the graphics on it are absolutely stunning. Um, you know, so, it, like it looks gorgeous. You've got all the ray tracing and all the reflections, you know, and all the cool lights and the streets and all that, and it just looks very real, which which, which is really it good. It has its own atmosphere. I mean, there yeah. was. A couple of times um, in the game, because you've got... There's a lot to <laughs> more to the game than I originally thought there was before I, I went into it. But yeah. you can be going around sometimes in the streets and you'll hear like a, a festival sort of like drums kicking in. Yeah. And you'll get like a parade of the dead <sighs> that will cool. wander down the street shrouded in mist. Oh, that's cool. And the first first few times I saw that happen, I was like, right, I'm staying away from that because there's some big old beasties in that yeah. parade. But once I was a bit too close and I got sucked into it. Oh, you know, this hell. big old long fight. And there's actually people in those you've got to save. Oh, wow. Okay. But it, it tracks pretty much everything you're you're doing as well on the map. Oh, if you look at cool. the different sections of the map, when you do a Tory gate, you can check on the map and it'll say, right, there's a hidden um, tanuki in the area. There's two other demons that need sorting out and it tells you the percentage of the souls from that area you've collected. Yeah, so if you cool, are yeah. going back and you're trying to do all the bits in the areas, you can see which areas you're missing things on. Yeah, that's good. You know, there's some yeah. stuff there. Yeah. I mean, I today I upgraded my water magic, and it was like absolutely beastly against like this fight. Um, I've had fights where I've been running around, and the world's changing around me as well. That's pretty awesome. There's some pretty cool, interesting little little bits, and there was one moment today where I actually jumped out of my seat. Oh wow! Okay. That, that's scary. <laughs> Which was shocking because I, I literally wasn't. It shouldn't have been, and it really wasn't. But it was like a bastard of a jump scare. It was kind of uh... creepy what was going on anyway. Because um, there is some pretty dark stuff in this, yeah, not necessarily yeah. in a way, but there's. You can read the histories on each of these different ghosts. Yeah, so you might cool. have seen basically like the ghost of the little girl in the raincoat. Yeah, yeah. And the umbrella. That's a yeah. bastard. You don't want to obviously scare that because it will scream and summon loads more ghosts in oh, great. and okay. it will vanish. But that's apparently sort of like the collected 
hatred or something of abused children. Oh, lovely. It's a spirit connected to that. Oh. It's, it's, it's kind of fucking weird. And then yeah. there's another one later on where um, it's like this spirit of a little sort of creature. And if you upset it, it will bring horrendous luck on you and stuff. Oh. Hmm. There's a question to ask. Right, this is a mm. Bethesda game. Yeah. Um, but this is Bethesda is actually an American studio, isn't it? Well, yeah. This is a ta- it is yeah, but they they publish obviously the the Tango GameWorks. I don't know. Right. So basically, this is another Tango part- GameWorks. Yeah, is actually being purchased by Microsoft because is it or isn't it? It has I been, don't know. It? It has I been. think is is Tango Gameworks actually part of Bethesda? If it no, is, then I'm guessing it has. so. It must, right, been, yeah. it must have been one of those deals uh, that was signed to go out on the PlayStation before. Yeah, yeah. Microsoft purchased yeah, one, it. Yeah, one one other unique thing I noticed is whenever you boot the game up, there's about three or four different Tango Gameworks intros that you'll get. Yeah. Well, there's one where a fly buzzes around and the snail basically like eats it. And then yeah. shits out the dots behind it <laughs> and smiles. It's, it's yeah. just very, very weird. Oh. So but back to the game, I find the atmosphere and, like I said, the represent or the how do you say the the presentation of Tokyo in the game is pretty yeah. much spot on. That's good. That's 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 uh, to have the to the feel and the, the the look. Obviously, there's way more people around in real life than there is in this game, yeah, whereas yeah, yeah. it just looked like a kind of a ghost town. But that's what gives it its own sort of like little sense of atmosphere in, yeah. in a way. Yeah. And you can hear everything. Every ghost has its own kind of noise as well. You know, if you hear certain weird sounds, what kind of ghost there there is around. If you're not using your sort of spectral vision at the time, yeah, mm. but that's cool, mate. Yeah, I'll but it's, play it's at some point, but yeah, been a fantastic sleeper hit. Look, you can obviously like hammer through it, and the story is kind of weird and strange. Yeah, um, but I think how they've gone about it is pretty cool. And I will say, um, I think they've got um, a thing for Moonlight Sonata. Oh well, yeah, it's good. Good track, man. <laughs> they, they use it in this, and I'm pretty yeah. sure they've used they used it in the Evil Within as well. Oh, probably. It's almost like when, I, when I, as soon as I heard it, I was like, ah, oh, I think that's a nod, but appreciate it because it's like to do. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. That was one of the side quests. I will say some of the other spirits as well. Um, leave their own marks on the world. You can tell there's usually one around. There's, there's, I think it's the woman with the giant shears. When she's around in a zone, like the entire area looks like it's covered in oil. Okay. Like a kind of slick oil, and it makes everything look horrid and dank. Oh. Until you obviously take her out. So yeah, bar the other ones that I usually always play. Um, that that's that's me done. Oh well, that's one scrubbed off my list for this week. Then anyway, <laughs> what's that? Ghostwire? Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's on my list, and so I can take that off now. So have you? Uh, I take it you've gone to the flat and all of that kind yeah, of stuff. That yeah, was yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, yeah, I don't want I don't want to spoil it for people because I'll say it's it's only been out a couple of weeks, so. Mm. But yeah, I, I am really enjoying it. But I'm trying to complete another game first, uh, which I got, which I might as well just just, just roll right into. Um, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, which is on Game Pass at the moment. See, I'm I'm not a big Marvel fan, but. I'm absolutely loving this game, and you know, and I, I did enjoy the movies. Yeah, I thought, I thought, I thought they were really good. To be fair, um, but this game, man, it's it's got its hooks into me big time. It really has. Uh, I'm 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 about I'm on chapter nine or ten. I think it's like yeah, nine or ten, maybe chapter ten. 
And this 16, game, isn't it? yeah, I know this game is long. I got to chapter eight, and I was thinking, oh, I must be getting quite close to the end of the game. And then I thought, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll look online to see how many chapters were. And I was like, sixteen, bloody hell! Yeah. But then some chapters are quite short, though. <laughs> so I've got to take take that into account. However, I'm I'm absolutely loving this game. It's so good. I, th- I think like it's just so polished. Um, you know, it comes together so well, you know, so it's got obviously the amazing 80s soundtrack, which is just, mm. I mean, the, how they got the licenses for all those songs is beyond me. Got so many classics within this game. Um, but I, I'm just really enjoying just everything about it. Just the, the gameplay is really, really good. You know, you you shoot your guns and you get your guns get more powers as you progress through the game. You get like ice and lightning, and then I'm I'm sure you get some other ones a bit later on as well. Mm-hmm. But then you can also control your four your other four squad mates. Like uh, they have a little bar on the right hand side, and you can select enemies for them to attack. Um, so yeah. you know, and then it recharges. And then there, there's another bar where when that fills up, you they get into a huddle and it's got some really good music playing yeah like classic mm. rock playing and then you've got to g up your team by choosing the right choice and then you know they 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 go mental on the enemies which is good um so that's really cool like all the areas that you explore are, i think are really well done um really good exploration some good puzzles in there but the story itself like it it feels like I'm playing for a movie. The, the 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 story is that good. I think it's so well done. It has some really good voice acting, uh, good characters, some good twists and turns in the story as well. Because you play the game, and you think, oh, I've got to go and um, you know, get this money for this for this fine. But then all this other crazy stuff happens, and the story completely mm. flip flops. I won't say any more on that. But yes, yeah, really well done. It really, really is so. Um, if you've got Game Pass, which I know a lot of you do who are listening, and this is one not to miss out on. Uh, you know, it's so damn good. It's probably one of the best games on Game Pass at the moment. There, um, it's it's not even been out that long, about six months. Yeah, it was one of those games where I don't think it sold as well due to the fact being everyone after playing Avengers thought I'm not paying out for that to be dog shit and yeah. it wasn't actually it was a complete opposite yeah. you know, this game. Yeah. Um, the only thing I will say with this game though is it'd be interesting to see if you can still play this game digitally as in like buy it in say six to eight years time because I reckon these licenses will all be disappeared then yeah, so yeah, yeah, you'll probably yeah. one that to pick up on disc at some point if you want to yeah. uh, you know or make sure you buy it you know yeah. Also, I've, you, up, I've yet to get around to it. Actually. It's so I've good. Up around Christmas in a sale. So. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's I was saying, Webby, you say that about the music because I thought about playing it and streaming it, but I think you would get in trouble for streaming it because yeah, the music. Yeah, it, it does so... have a stream mode. Yeah, yeah I was going to stream but, mode. Yeah. Uh, if the music is so good, and that's what makes yeah, you kind of miss out on an aspect yeah. of the game. Yeah, you yeah. do. So I'm thinking, oh, do I even? No, it's not something you'd personally I wouldn't stream it I'll just play it and enjoy it with the yeah. correct music to be honest because it does make the game I mean if you've watched the movies yeah the music is a big part of the movies right and that's and that's a big part of the game mm. uh, yeah and I'm just flabbergasted to be honest at how good this game actually is as you, as you right, rightfully mentioned the Avengers game and flip-flopped we, you, you yeah. did, a lot of us did kind of be like what is this when they first showed it off and yeah. it went on for ages as well, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, really yeah. were pushing it. Yeah. Mm. It's about 25, 30 game. minutes, and they showed the same thing about three times, didn't yeah. they? In the same sections. We're like, all oh. right. Yeah. But, but yes, yeah, a fantastic game. It's really surprised me at the quality, to be honest. Mm. Um, yeah, just, it's good. And, and, and graphically, it's stunning as well. So, yeah, it's, it's a one good, neat package. Right, I'm going to move on. Uh, I just need to highlight it. Okay, so MLB The Show 2022 comes out on Monday. I did get an early copy on the Switch today. (laughs) 
<laughs> Why were you laughing? <laughs> no, no, no reason. <laughs> um. Oh yeah. my god! I mean, it comes out on Game Pass on Monday, right? And so it's on play. So it's out on PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch. It's still Game Pass on. Place, it's still uh, Game Pass on Xbox, is it, which is really? fantastic. Yeah, because they yeah. did that on the last one, didn't they? Yeah. Mm. However, no PC version still, which I'm really pissed off about. So I, I'm actually on the fence of buying myself an Xbox Series S uh, to go in my PC room just to play MLB the Show and Forza. You've got an X downstairs, mate. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, but my missus is always on it in the evening. I don't get, a, I don't get a look in. Um, well, buy, buy the S, maybe that downstairs. Give, give, give that to her, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. saw an S yesterday. I get for a cheap, uh, just Xbox One, like a oh, Xbox One X or the white one. Oh, uh, uh, no, that's so last gen. I, no. I saw an S, the um, uh, sorry, Series S. Yeah, they're Saturday. so easy to get. They're so easy to get hold of. Man. Yeah, they're um, I don't you know. You can I'm... walk it. I can walk into a shop tomorrow and buy an S. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can buy. We're them. always on hot UK deals for about 180, 190 quid with games and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I might, I might pick one up. Anyway, um, they're yeah. dropped before Christmas in price. I guarantee well, it. Probably. It's only because, right? So there'll be a new one out soon. Yeah, so but because I've been playing Forza, I, I do Forza Thursday before every Thursday, and we did it this week. And we actually, and Peeps joined us as well. So shout, shout, shout out to Peeps for joining us. Thank, thank you very much. It was really, really good to have a fourth. Um, <coughs> but I, I usually play it on the Xbox, but I played it this week on my PC, and it just it start it runs all right for about an hour, and then for some reason the game just starts to chug. Runs like absolute dog shit. I think it might it might have a memory leak or something. So you have to kind of put up, up with it or just restart the game, which is awful. Um, so it's one of those games that I just like to play on the Xbox just because it 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 runs fine on the Xbox. And obviously, I like I love my baseball, and I I have tried playing MLB the Show on X Cloud. and be, because you can play all the console X Cloud games on your PC through the app. And bearing in mind, I've got a one terabyte broadband, one terabyte, one gigabyte broadband. I don't know why I said terabyte. One one gig broadband wired up to my PC, so I get about nine hundred meg on my PC, and the streaming still runs like shit. It it just looks awful, and there's input lag. I don't, I, I, I don't think it's playable like that, to be honest. So I'll need to have the game on a device. And I'm really disappointed that MLB The Show isn't on PC again. I was hoping it would come to PC this year. Um, so it's going to make me, <laughs> excuse me, maybe buy another Xbox. So, yeah, so I've been playing it on the Switch today. And it, I, if I, you know, if you have a choice between getting it on the Switch or other systems, get it on the other systems because. It looks not. It doesn't look great, and the and the frame rate is so shoddy. And baseball is one of those games where you know you need a smooth frame rate because you you know the ball's being thrown at you really fast, so you need to time your swing. And when the frame rate's really crap, it's really hard to be able to time. Um, so it's a little bit fr frustrating. However. I picked it up on the Switch because I, I'm, I'm flying next week and I wanted, and I thought it'd be a nice game to play on the Switch while I'm on the plane. Not really having to <laughs> think about anything or whatever. But uh, yeah, graphically and uh, performance-wise on the Switch, it's not great. I think the Switch is really starting to show its age now on some games, and this one really does show it, unfortunately. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing this on Game Pass next week as well, so... Uh, Good times. Um, quickly rip through some of these then. So, <coughs> obviously, I talked about Forza. Had some absolutely, positively, fantastic 
sessions on Gran Turismo 7 this week uh, with Captain Venom and Laugh of Fummy. Um, but I, like, I don't understand why no one else in the community is playing this game. I just don't get it. I know Wes has got it, but he's obviously in Thailand and we've got the, um, you know, the time zones to think about. Yeah, so I, I, I do understand that. But I would have thought more people in the UK would be playing Gran Turismo in this community. There's and, not an Xbox. And there's not, is it, well, yeah, I mean, Probably I know, but, but a lot of people do do have the PlayStation. Yeah. Right? Um, so it's just a little bit frustrating. The PS4 version, Webby. I don't think so. I think they're separate. I Maybe think that's I'm not why, because... PS5s are still rare as rock and all shit, aren't they? They just haven't got a PlayStation well, 5. I, I think mostly is the fact being is that the people that haven't got a PS5 is because they don't really want one. That's why. Because there's no games for it. That's what they're saying. Uh-huh. Uh, everything, everything I ever hear is, I'm not buying a PS5. There's no games for it. Now, I'll tell you what, man. No, 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 I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm going to go out and say this, right? And this, you know, and, and you know how much I love my Xbox and my play, yeah. uh, my PC and all that. I think Gran Turismo is a system seller. I I would buy a PlayStation just for Gran Turismo. Wow, well. uh, that's how much I really uh, that, that's how much I enjoy the game, and I know it's got its issues that we mentioned last week with the uh, having to be online and all that jazz. But you know, <clears throat> playing it online with friends is just so much fun. They, really, you know, mm. I mean, they, I mean. I've played it. I played with the controller on the odd occasion. I think it's great with the PlayStation controller. The force feedback is is second to none. It's, you get a really good experience with the controller on this. I will say that. Um, but I played with the racing wheel, and it just adds that extra layer of immersion. Mm. Now, what 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 we're really what, what I'm really enjoying about it is, you know, I've done most of the single player stuff now. I've still got some of the licenses to do, some of the challenges, but I've kind of done the main cafe portion. Which is fantastic, by the way, and they're going to be adding more stuff later as as add on content for free. But now we've kind of sussed out the online. Now the online isn't perfect by any, by any means, so they still need to sort out the lobby system because you make a lobby with a certain car class and a certain track. You once you're in the lobby, the host can't change the car class or the track, so they have to close the lobby down and make a new one, which I think is awful and needs sorting. But if you look past that, it's actually we 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 have a really good time. So what we did this week was one 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 of us chose a specific car, which was a Mazda MX five, and we gave it a certain performance point limit. So it starts off at five hundred, and we're like, and we all and we said right, maximum of six hundred p p p p, right? And you can limit the race to that so no one can fuck around or whatever. And it's just that art of everyone's tweaking their cars different right um you know just adding a set of slick tires add puts it over the 600 so if you wanted the slicks you had to tweak the car power down uh or you could use like less grippy tires and put the power up um you know so all those factors came into it and then what we did is we had long races like 20 lap races and we were adding in tire wear and fuel so we were having to do pit stops as well so you, like so it's like when you watch the four of the formula 1 as a prime example like it was it came into tactics like when 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 are we going to pit you know because you can change your fuel consumption on the car as 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 well it has there's like six different settings on fuel consumptions so obviously if you put it on the maximum fuel cons- consumption obviously your car's not going to go as fast or has a lower top speed and has a lower acceleration but you'll get a lot more laps out of the fuel tank yeah um but you know if you have it on one which is the most performance then obviously you can go faster but then you have to pit uh, uh, earlier so you have got those tactics in play uh which is really cool and then we added in the different weather so we you know some tracks would start off wet and then go dry so we're like right you know we're gonna have to change tires at some point and tires make a big fact they are a big factor in this game they really do change 
the handling of the cars. So we just well, handled... they're a huge factor in reality as well. Well, that's it. Yeah, right. Um, of course. So and 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 this is why we're really loving the game because we're 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 doing all these different factors in the racing and it just makes it more challenging. It, it just, you know, it's just different to like just chucking on a racing game and just racing the 20 laps. You know, it's, it adds that extra layer of realism. Uh, uh, you know, and, it, and, and it is, it has become my favorite racing game at the moment. I'm, I'm just absolutely loving it. I've played it. It is my, it's been my most played game this week to be fair. Cause I, you know, I've been playing it every evening for pretty much with, the guys and it it's just so damn good it really really is yeah so you know if you've got a playstation and you've not picked pick this up um i would rec you know i would recommend it most definitely you know we're on a lot of evenings you, you know you're always welcome to join us we do have a really good laugh on it um yeah it's a great game it really really is so i mean there's nothing else i can say on it really uh okay so play two more games i'm only going to mention them very very briefly um wwe 2k22 uh still really enjoying that um there's a there's a game mode called my rise which is basically you create a character and you start you know you go through training and, and all that so it's basically just kind of your character's story mode and it's actually quite good to be honest, you know, because you, you you're going for all the training missions, and it's all about you know, and it has some 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 really good store storylines there as well, uh, and the graphics are absolutely fantastic as well. Uh, adds, which which adds when it has all the classic roster, you know, like from Hulk Hogan and The Rock, Steve Austin, and and all those other characters as well, you know, Bret Hart, Owen Hart. Um, you know, the list goes on all the way up to the crappy new ca characters, yeah. Um, and then I've got another mode, which is um, a GM mode, which is basically you run well, one of the shows like Raw or SmackDown or NXT, you, and you draft your players, it, your, your wrestlers in, and you set up the matches and and the promos and stuff like that. <clears throat> so, you know, it's actually a really, it's probably the best wrestling game that they've brought out in many, many years, to be honest. Um, it's good because obviously yeah. the last one was a complete train wreck, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they and, and they've also got another mode which I've not played as the Rey Mysterio kind of store storyline mode. Um, so, but yeah, it's a good, it's a really good game. Really enjoying it. So probably uh, going to have a ton of content. They usually us. do. Yeah. Well, what do you say, Nick? So spoilers, Rey Mysterio lost at WrestleMania yesterday. Oh, so. what a shame. On the game, on the game box, but he lost. <laughs> well, I can't win them all. <laughs> well, it doesn't really matter who wins or loses, does it? <laughs> but, but, yeah. Interesting. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying that. And the last game, <laughs> excuse me, I played this week which was a little bit of a surprise to me. It's a game I've owned since 2017, and it's still in Alpha Star Citizen. Do you remember that game, guys? Yeah. It's still in development. <laughs> it's still coming. I don't know if it's ever going to come out. Um, They added City and stuff to it, didn't they? I think the last got, time I was looking at They've got at three this, cities well. now, three planets with cities. They've got lots of planets. Um, it's actually, you know, performance-wise, it's not great, to be fair. Um, but it's running on a very old engine. But graphically, it looks very, very good. Um, and, and, and it's just, you know, you, you can tell, you can see the ambition there. Because, you, you know, you choose a home world, you, you know, and it's very immersive in the fact that you get up and you have to travel around like if you want to go to where your ships um like the the, the port or whatever it's called where where all the ships are to call your ship in you know you've got to get up tra traverse like the city there's all shops and things like that you get you get on a tram line and then you, it takes you to the spaceport you go to the spaceport you call your ship in and you've got to go to the specific hangar your ship's in you know and it's all very 
busy. It feels very lived in. There's a lot going on. Yeah, it does, you know, it's very, um, as I say, it's not empty or anything like that. It's all, you know, it it, it feels very, there, there's a lot of content there, if that makes sense. However, there's no tutorial or anything, so it took me a while to figure things out. And I was quite lucky because my stepson's been playing it a lot recently, so I jumped in with him and he was telling me to do. And then he came and met me, and he's got this cool ship with a couple of turrets on it. And he was like, right, we'll do a mission. I was like, all right, cool. And I said to him, oh, the performance is so shit in the city, getting about 20 FPS. It's not, well, it's not good enough. And it was like, oh, we'll just get in the ship and we'll fly out into space. We flew out into space. It takes time. Everything in this game takes time because it's trying to be very, very realistic. So we get out into space and then all of a sudden, because there's less stuff around, like the frame rate's got up to 60. It's very smooth. And you can change the view. So when you're on the ship, you can press F4 to look outside and there's all the stars twinkling and like pan, pan around the ship. It's like, right, get, get, get on the turret. We're going to do this mission. So we did this mission where we went to this like, about the this ship that's been hijacked by space pirates so we get to the area and then we have a ship you know uh we're battling the pirate ship so i'm on the turret you know and i'm looking around and i'm shooting them and and we destroy the pirate ships it's like right we, we now need to dock on this ship that's still got pirates on it i was like all right so we dock and then you're in first and then you go into you know your first person mode and you're running around with a gun yeah and then you're going around, it's like a first-person shooter game, you know, you're clearing all the pirates out of the ship, clear them out, and then it's mission complete. And it's just that transition, I think, from, you know, you're on, like, your home planet, and they're, all three of them are different, and you're just kind of walking around, it's all very peaceful and that, and then, and then you transition into flying the spaceship, and there's hundreds of different ships in this game that you can buy, they're all, you know, they're all very different. And you can have multiple people on these ships. You know, they've got different turrets. Because cause he had another one of his mates in. So his ship had two turrets on it. And he had his guns as well. So it's like, you know, a, a three-man ship, which, which was really, really cool. Um, so you're going from like a space, you know, flying space game shooting things to a first-person game when you kind of land on planets or go into these other areas, like these other ships. So it actually worked quite well in that aspect to, you know, there, there is quite a bit of content there now. But what I find quite disappointing, as I say, is just because it's running on an old engine now, because the game's been in development for so long, it just doesn't, it doesn't perform as well as a modern game does, you know, because you're trying to crank up your, it's trying to use all the hardware on your PC, but because the engine is so old, it, it just, it's not, it doesn't get that peak performance like the frame rate just isn't there and that's very frustrating but it, as i say it looks good and it's just so much to because when you're flying a ship it's not just oh i'll get in and fly it you sit in your seat there's all these buttons in front of you you've got to turn the engine on and do all these other bits and pieces and you can use a hotas with it as well if you want um like ships just in your mouse and keyboard it just feels very um simmy if like a bit like elite dangerous when you're flying the ships you know with quite cool so yeah i think it's aiming to be kind of a second life if that makes sense i don't know if you ever played that um mm. you know you're in this oh, world yeah, yeah and, and you know you have your currency and you have like your reputation <clears throat> and all that as well yeah you have your home and go in shops and buy better better and things mm. So yeah, it feels very grand, very big, but it's as I say, it hasn't improved a lot since I last played it a few years ago. But um, yeah, you can tell it still needs a lot of work, and I oh, fuck knows when it's going to be out. No idea. Looks nice though. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, the co-op works well, and you know, we 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 had fun. So I mean, there's nothing else to concern it really. It's just. It's just it's been interesting to see how far it's evolved from when I first bought the game all those years ago, and how much you know how much has been added new you know all these extra missions, worlds and ships and things. Yeah, it's really really cool. Um, cool. That's what I've been playing. Okay, on to news. I know you wanted to talk about this, Stunny, so we'll get this out of the way because I know you might want to go to bed soon. 
Um, yeah. PlayStation PlayStation Plus launched three different levels of Plus, didn't they? Yeah. Mm. So, um, so I'll just run down what you got. So you got PlayStation Plus Essential, which is PlayStation Plus as we know of it now. You know, online play, your two monthly games, yeah, and it's the same price of fifty quid a year, yeah, or seven pound a month, or twenty pound every quarter. Uh, you, then you've got PlayStation Plus Extra. Uh, which adds on a catalogue of up to 400 PlayStation 4 and PS5 games, um, which is, I'm just looking at it, £84 for the year or £11 a month, uh, which is quite cool. However, the, uh, yeah, so it's PS4 and PS5 games. It, obviously, it's not all of them, but it's a nice back catalogue there, which is quite cool. And then you've got, oh, excuse me, PlayStation Plus Premium, which is £100 for the year, or £13.49 a month. And that adds everything from the other two tiers, but also includes PS3 games uh, stream only, so you can only stream the PS3 games, you can't download them. And a catalogue of games that you can stream or download from PS1, PS2 and PSP, which I think is quite a cool thing if they add, you know, um, Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII to that uh, list. Um, yeah, so... Dreaming, Webby. Oh, well, I hope they do. I mean, it's never come out on digital ever, so you can only get the physical, but I, I think they're, they're, they're quite cool options to be honest i know stunty's gonna have his words about it in a moment however I, I i think the only negative on this is that playstation 3 games can only be streamed i would have thought they would have sought out the sort sorted out the emulation on the ps5 to be able to download them because as i say i don't think game streaming is at a really good place still um but but, but i think the fact that those options are there and you can download ps1 ps2 and psp games as well as P play ps3 and ps4 games on the service i think it's pretty cool if the games on offer are fantastic and i only say that because i in my opinion the ps1 and probably some of the ps2 especially the ps1 had the best in my opinion some of the best jrpgs of all time so if they're included in this bundle then it'd be a really good nostalgia hit uh for a lot of people but, yeah, they haven't, they haven't told yeah. us what they are yet. But we don't know what the games are, right? But, <laughs> but Stunny, you're not impressed. No, I just don't really want Sony to go down the same route as Xbox, really, as in doing these, you know, like a Game Pass thing, even though it is different to Game Pass because Game Pass is stuff, you know, everything that's Microsoft is day one yeah. free. Um, I just think Sony should sort of, like Nintendo to a certain degree, have their own path really of what they're doing really, and not sort of copy what Microsoft does. Yeah, um, but Nintendo, you know, they kind of gone. The, the, yeah, so, sorry. So N Nintendo have gone the subscription route on some in some regard, haven't they? With yes. the Snares, Snares, and Mega Drive uh, compilations with the Nintendo Switch Online. Mm. Um, how, however, there, there is a slight difference between PlayStation and Xbox in regards that Sony are not going to be putting out their launch titles onto no. the service, which I think is a great. I, I think it's a good move, to be honest, mm. because because they have that premium, yeah. right? You know, and I know the games are seventy quid, and I moan about the price, but they're going for that kind of pre premium corner of the market, and. Um, I do have written down actually that Jim Ryan said that he he thinks that the that the PlayStation games would would suffer quality wise if they were included in the subscription model, and I think he's right there. Yeah. And, and I say that, um, Stunty, because you look at the quality of the games that have come to Game Pass from X, mm. from Microsoft Studios. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Halo is a prime example. Yeah, it's not doing very well, uh, 
I know Forza Horizon's done well, but again, I think the quality of that on the on the PC is dog shit. Hmm. Thing is, Halo is not Bungie anymore, is it? No, it's it has funny, gone downhill it? since. It, the, yeah. it was funny because last week you were talking about um, Bungie's no longer Microsoft, and you were talking about sort of uh, mascots, and you were saying, you know, like. Activision is now Microsoft. Yeah. So it's like, so the mascot for Sony was Crash, realistically. Yeah. Yeah. And it's quite funny. They've both reversed, haven't they? It's like, yeah. it's like, um, it's it's like going out with your ex-girlfriend. They've both <laughs> done it. <laughs> haven't they? Yeah. You think about it, you know, Bungie's gone to Sony yeah. and uh, Act, uh, Crash Bandicoot's gone to Xbox. So it's basically, they've done a wife swap. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's weird, but just 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 going back on this PlayStation um, services that they're doing, and I, I think this will appeal to some people. A bit like with Game Pass, it you know it appeals more to people who maybe haven't gamed as much as say we have. It yeah. gives and it gives them a nice back catalogue. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I have PS now. I mean. I have it. I don't use it, and I'll probably probably cancel it because it's due this month actually. Oh, and yeah. I have actually just cancelled the auto renew because you have to, you know, because Sony are terrible. Yeah, yeah, care. they are. Yeah, yeah. And um, but it's like, I mean, I've got stuff that I've downloaded on PS now that I haven't even played. It's like yeah. they bought GTA out. They bought GTA Three out. That was PS now. They've now bought um, Vice City yeah. on PS Now, which actually, to be honest, they didn't even tell you they were going to, you know, was, and there was no broadcasting about it. They just put it on PS Now. I've got Shadow Warriors 3, which is actually a new, quite a new game, actually. Okay. And that's on PS Now. And I've downloaded it. And have I played it? Nope. I've not even started it. <laughs> it's just one of those things, isn't it? But I, I think it does appeal to some people, though. And I, oh, yeah. I, 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 I think. You know, it's nice to have that option, mm. and but but and because that they're not putting their new releases onto the service, I don't think it's going to take anything away from, as I say, the quality that we all know and love of those PlayStation exclusive single player titles, mm. especially right. I just think it's a shame about the PS3. I mean, the PS3 is becoming like the Sega Saturn now, isn't it? It is, yeah. It really is. It's like, uh, it's just so annoying because there's so many things on the PS3, like the 360, really, that I would like to play. Yeah. Um, and also, there was quite a few PS3 games that were exclusives as well, like yeah. Tier and stuff like that, that are exclusive. And yeah. unless you've got a PS3, it's the only way you can play them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, and it's like I mean I've been told that the, that the PS5 is possible it can do it, but it just I don't know I don't know why Sony aren't I don't know I really don't know the answer on that one. They need to I develop mean, an t- emulator that works well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, they just, just can't be bothered because because they're not really Sony have never been really too big on backwards compatibility. Really, this they, is the. This is their response, like basically, it's yeah. their way of getting around the whole back compat thing for the people who want it. Yeah, mm, yeah. But you you say that about the back compat, as in Sony haven't really, but they have because they did it on the PS2. You were able to play the PS1 games on the PS2. Yeah, yeah. You know, so but, but then the PS3 had... came out, and then the launch consoles could play yeah, PS1, PS1 and, and 2 PS2. games, and then yeah. and then and then they changed the design. To yeah. Save money, and the, and you couldn't play the PS2 games on the newer mm. models. Yeah, which is why they're stupid money now. The PS3, the original ones. Yeah. No, but um, no, it's just a bit of a bizarre one, really, from Sony. But I don't know. It's just who knows. <laughs> I think the PS3 is a great console. I mean, because any PS3 console plays PS1 discs, so it's yeah. actually a really good retro console for PS1 games. To be honest. Mm. Yeah, and they're cheap now as well. You can pick up PS3s for yeah. at least 40 quid now. Yeah, at the That's moment, good. they're at the lowest price possible at the moment. Yeah. So if you're going to get one, get one now because I think they're going to start going up in price. I mean, the, I still see the original big George Foreman jobbies out in the world. Oh, and those things are fucking, 
they were like the white Xbox 360s. I mean, they had the yellow light of death. Yeah, didn't they? mine, my, mine died. I had the yellow light on mine, my George yeah. Foreman, which I was really gutted about. Mm, so, oh, but so. the mid, the middle ones are probably the best ones because they then bought the one that looks like a fucking sandwich toaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, that like slidey one. disc tray thing. Yeah, yeah. I picked one of them up the other week actually for a tenner. Box. I think the um, <laughs> bizarre. I think the PS2 is one of the best design, like console designs, to be honest. Because I liked how you could have it laying down or standing up, and you could twizzle the little PlayStation logo on the front, depending mm. on which way you had the system, which is really cool. And just that start up, it felt very futuristic at the time, you know, with the blue squares and then it zoomed in and, oh yeah, good memories. The, the, um, the, the PS2 Mini, the, the, the you know, because they bought the, the original one out, the original PS2, and then they bought the Mini PS2, which was tiny, isn't yeah. it? Even now, it's the one tiny. I've got at the moment. Yeah, I mean, that PS2 is actually a really good console because... Yeah. They did actually bring out, not Sony, but Logitech bought out a TV uh, that you could plug onto the back of it. Oh, that's that was a cool. small telly because I've actually got one and it's a little TV and it literally, it's like a, all right, it has to go on a plug socket, but it's huh. like a tiny telly. So, and it's still quite small. And Have you so, seen um, that you can get a TV for the Series S now as well? I saw that. Yeah, it's yeah. a shame that the Series S isn't this disc compatible because then it'd be even that'd be perfect then that'd oh, be great you know, yeah because then you could just you didn't have to have the internet but then the trouble is with the series x it has to be online doesn't it for the updates now because otherwise it's yeah. Internet, yeah which is one thing about the xbox that does wind me up um where the xbox ones and the they you can still play them offline but you yeah. can't with the x it has to it has drm it has to have it, you know. You can't. If it's if your you home console, you can play the games offline. But for, I don't know if you can play it for, forever, though. I think there is a limit. I oh, is there? All oh, right. Well, you yeah. can just tether your phone to it to do the thing, and then turn it off mm. again, I suppose. But yeah, probably. Yeah, right. like, like that. Adding the TV screen to the S is one of the other reasons why I really want to pick one up at some point because you can just lug it in a put it in a box and away you go. You know what I mean? I'd love to know what price they are because I remember the PS2 screens were quite expensive. For yeah, I'm not sure on the price, but um, they, I just they think did. it looks cool because I had one for the PS1. I had the official PS1, you know, like the mini PS1 had oh, the screen yes, for that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I used to take it to work with me on night shifts. Yeah. Yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> yeah, it's quite funny because they did quite a few of those things back in the day because they even did one on the GameCube. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, it's a good size for that, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They 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 released another newer version of that now, but like obviously a third party one. Yeah. They're still releasing stuff like that now. Oh, sweet. Mm, Yeah, yeah, because I went to a house probably four years ago and he had one for the PS4. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. He had an original PS4. And he had a screen on. I was like, what do, you, what do you mean he's got a screen? And he showed me it all and the rest of it. I was like, oh, my word. I said, how much was that, though? The screen, you know, you plug it in the back and and it flips up again. Cool. And he said, oh, yeah, it was at least 250 quid. I was like, whoa. Fucking hell. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a lot. Yeah. I bought a TV for that. I know he yeah. could have done. But he said, he said, oh, it's great for me because I go off to hotels and the rest of it. And he said, and a lot of the hotels, you can't plug your HDMI into. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was perfect for Put that. them on the wall so you can. I think that's to stop you putting dirty yeah, stuff on there, I think. Uh, probably because people fuck up the HDMI sockets. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Uh, Ramming it in. <laughs> as you do. All right. But, um, yeah. Yeah, done, done. So, so yeah, the PlayStation, uh, I, I, mean, I mean, we all knew that something was coming, right? Because it's been mm. rumoured for a while and... They're trying to compete with Xbox in some kind of way, but not, mm. you know, to that level. But yeah, I think it's great the options there, but I don't, I don't know how how well it will do. Only time will tell, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just a fan of yeah. subscription models to certain. That's fair degree, enough, but... mate. You know, I fully understand that. Mm. Uh, Breath of the Wild Two has been delayed until spring of 2023. Not that we're super surprised at that, and I'm not really that bothered because I've got so many games to play. Like, yeah, whatever. I will. I will. Obviously, I'll get it. But yeah, delay is great in my opinion. Yeah. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Um, E3 has been fully cancelled this year. I know. Cause yeah. Because I thought it was an April Fool's. He did, I, didn't he? Yeah. And I said to him, no, it came out just before. Uh. Yeah. So, but then I, I put on the Discord... It would only be a Microsoft conference anyway, because they've bought them all. <laughs> they've bought Bethesda. Yeah. They've bought Activision. So basically, it'd only be like Sony, but then they're, they're not even there either. Well, Sony don't go anymore. I don't think Nintendo no. go anymore. Well, it was, I think it recently it's been mainly been Ubisoft, EA, but they've canceled. Army, Capcom, which are kind of a bit shortish, really, and... And Microsoft, and obviously EA announced they weren't going to be there this year mm, about yeah. two or three weeks ago. Yeah. So I, I think it was supposed to be left. Because I think it was meant to be digital only again this year. Obviously, mm. it's been fully cancelled. I mean, I, I, I don't see free coming back from this. To be honest. No, I think it's gone. I, I, th- I, th- I do think. It, I, I do think. I think so too, Stunty and. Mm. And the main and the main reason for that is I I I think you know the the nail was half in the coffin before COVID even hit anyway you know with the likes of Sony and Nintendo pulling out of E three anyway um, it just felt like there was less and less games companies going to the event anyway um, and there was less news coming out of it every year you know you remember E threes back in the day you'd get you you'd get like all the big game announcements i'll be like wow oh my god and um, now it's like all the big announcements are at like the game awards or these cut or like sony nintendo and microsoft just do their own online show yeah, yeah so you'll probably, this year you'll probably get microsoft do it yeah event. i think a, so state of player come out and then nintendo do their direct as well yeah so i, I think e3 has become less and less of a I don't know a thing, you know, that people really highly regard because it used to be the show of the year, and now it's like, I think it's just dead. No one gives a shit about it. Just don't. I don't see the point. To be fair, only, only the journalists because they're the ones that probably go along for a piss up. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> and they're in your pocket now, aren't they? They just upload something to YouTube. Yeah. It's there, and they don't have to worry about messages getting lost and people, yeah. you know, lost. Things going wrong, and I mean, let's be honest about it. The worst one that you know was the Xbox One with the always on live TV stuff. Yeah, and yeah. We still weren't sure a few days after what that meant, and like you yeah. said, we still. I think we're doing that now anyway, where you have to turn back to the internet to verify your digital games and stuff like. That. I don't think yeah. that ever really yeah. went away, and and obviously they pay a lot of money to go to this thing, you know, E3. I think it's in the millions for yeah, 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 yeah. more space and stuff like that. And it's just, it's just not worth it. Like, like, there's no magazines about or anything like that anymore. Mm. It's just direct to your pocket, in it? Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just technology's changed, times have changed, you know, and the way that everyone consumes content has completely changed. Yeah, I mean... We, we, we were miss bits, though. There were some funny things from E3, like the Ubisoft with the dance things <laughs> the sony with the here's my game i'll give it to you yeah. there we go game sharing i still like <laughs> then, one of my favorites uncharted dying as well the game didn't it, it crashed didn't it while yeah. it was low playing I mean, uncharted 4 the, the the playstation i think it was a ps3 the giant enemy crab memes yeah oh, i love that and he said Look at how realistic this game is. Look at this giant crab. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of good How are you doing the football thing? Yeah, yeah, was like Keanu Reeves as well. I think that's probably the last <laughs> thing when it's Cyberpunk. You're all, amazing. Yeah, all the Xbox 360s dying with the Red Ring of Death on the, on the show floor. <laughs> oh, good times, good times. <laughs> Or we used to look at that when we used to go to Eurogame. We used to look oh, at the three. Used to laugh, the, yeah. They used to be in those plastic boxes. You think so? Those things must be cooking themselves. In there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah. Oh man. Right. I'm going to move on because I know time is ticking on. Um. La- Everybody's golf. I like this game. However, the online servers are shutting down in September. Mm, yeah, I saw that. Bloody face. 
Bloody face indeed. Sad. Did you ever play it online? Yeah, it's really good <laughs> oh, online. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't played it recently. Probably no, no one playing it. But no, uh yeah, I I just find it sad when I see news that game servers are being shut down and mm. that 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 whole portion of the game is never going to be available again, right? Uh, well, yeah, just 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 think of that. Obviously, I've heard recently that <clears throat> there's been quite a few mobile games being shut down. Yeah, yeah, well, mobile and games th- th- those are games that are completely gone forever. Yeah, it, that's that's it. It's gone. Won't be able to play that again. I, I got told you oh, oh, music, etc. Story. Gone. What'd you say, Stunny? I said I was told yesterday by my daughter that Angry Birds is no longer able to be played on a mobile device. Oh, really? Because oh, I've got the, the new one. I don't know, but they would say you can't down. Well, you can't buy it. Well, the first one. It. The first. I one. don't know. Oh, right. no, that's what I was told. Uh, Does anyone remember Flappy Bird? I just popped yes. into my mind, yeah. and, that, yeah. and then and then like it become a that's sensation, cool. and then it got taken down by the creator because he didn't like the. Uh, all the attention. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't think he cared about the attention. He didn't like the death threats he was getting. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> God. I remember, uh, I think everyone played Flappy Bird. Yeah, well, I remember when it got taken to the store, people were selling their iPads for silly money because they had the game on it. Mm. Um, oh, the oh, last thing I want to mention is I watched episode two of Halo this week. The Halo t- the new Halo TV show on Paramount Plus. Mm. Careful, Webby. Be careful. <laughs> I'm being careful, about I'm just. I was just saying. I. I. I actually enjoyed it, and I know people oh, have. You're good then. <laughs> I know a lot. A lot of people have been slagging it off the first episode. Um, no, because things do happen. Like Chief takes his helmet off and spends a lot of it without his helmet on. But I'm liking it because it's kind of. I know it's like in a different kind of uh it's not it's not related to the games, right? But now I finished that episode two, a lot of stuff like ties in. So you've got like Captain Keys, Dr. Halsey, they're starting to introduce Cortana. Um and, and it goes uh and it and you kind of find out more about Master Chief, like you get hints about his childhood and how he become a super soldier, Spartan. And it's actually really interesting. Um, you know, so if you can look past, you know, those game elements not being relevant uh, to a large degree, I think the show is actually pretty decent, to be fair. Um, I think it's been getting a lot of unfair criticism from people that were expecting it to be a show of the game. It isn't. Um, <laughs> Why would people expect a Halo TV series to be like the game? Oh, you know, but um, it isn't. But it's really, I think it's good, man. I'm I'm looking forward to watching it again next week. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just check it out. I mean, don't make assumptions until you've watched it, to be fair. You know, most shows take an episode or two to get going anyway, right? So, mm. you know. What I'm saying is there'll be a lot of... Uh like Paramount and the people who made it have been going after negative critics on YouTube and like copyright claim and oh, really? YouTube videos, which is, I think the, <laughs> one of the biggest one was angry Joe. Whereas the first episode they really loved and said how brilliant it was. So they <laughs> contacted them and offered them all like free Paramount plus to watch it and toys. Right. And then the next episode they said it was Terrible, just said it wasn't as good, and they like flagged them and like blocked their episodes. That's hilarious. <laughs> not everyone's yeah. gonna like it. No, I mean, yeah, just... you know, not everyone's gonna like all content, right? But you know, I think give it a chance. Don't you know, don't go by. I mean, my rule of thumb is I know I don't go by reviews, I, I like to judge for myself. And I went into this thinking it was going to be dog shit, but I wanted to watch it to talk about it on the show. And I, I, I'm actually really enjoying it. So just take from that what you will. I might have bad taste. You might like what I like. I don't know, but that's that's quite good. And the other thing I just just popped into my mind as well: if you're a Shenmue fan, watch the anime on Crunchyroll. Uh, I watched episode nine today. It's so good, so fucking good. Now this is a show that follows the game exactly the story and it's done so well. I watched it this morning and I was just like, 
just had a smile on my face the whole time because I'm a big Shenmue fan. I know Nick is as well. Uh, it's one of my favourite game series of all time. And I just really do think they've done the games justice with this anime. It's it's so well done. All the characters are in it. Uh, you know, the story's pretty much spot on. It's fantastic, man. So if you're a Shenmue fan, check it out, motherfuckers. It's so good. Should I play the video game? Yeah, do it. I've never, I've never played it. I think the thing is, right, I think with Shenmue, it's, it's tough to say, right, because when it came out on the Dreamcast back in the day, you know, it was way ahead of its time. You know, at the time, it was the most expensive video game ever made. You know, it was the first kind of open world game where you go around and all that jazz, right? And it, it was ahead of its time. And, I, and, and for me, that nostalgia is always there. So I played the kind of remasters on the Xbox again when they came out a year or two ago. And then obviously I played free when that came out. But um, they still hold, you know, if compared to games now, they feel very clunky, very old school. But I love them. You know, I love free and free kind of tries to keep those old school tropes in it as well. Um, so it depends if like you dig that kind of gameplay and story, to be honest. But I, I think the story is fantastic. And as, just to see it in an anime is even better. As a Yakuza fan... Yeah. Would I really like it because of that? Yaku- I mean, Yaku- I know. I mean, Yakuza is different in a lot of ways, but is it right? Okay, I, I I like it because it's all about the martial arts, and you know, it's all about trying to be restrained and like uh, it's about respect and you know, and and all that sort of stuff. But the story is really, really good, actually. I'd have to yeah, once, once I've got keep an eye on it, mate. The first two come on sale on Xbox and PlayStation oh, I've got them. for like a fiver. Oh, I, have, I, I do own them. Oh, I am there. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just haven't. It's still sealed. You might be pleasantly <laughs> surprised. Yeah, I, it's just one of those. I I, I picked it up and then it <laughs> went on the on the sort of pile. Yeah, and I just never got round to playing it, and I keep looking at it. And I keep thinking, mm, should I really start this soon? And they just think, oh, well, let's finish this off first. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I it, it's, it's quite quite on though, aren't you, Webby? It was just a game such ahead of its time. Yeah. And was one of the first to do so many things in games. But because yeah. everyone else has copied it over 20 years and yeah. eaten it, you know, made, refined it, made stuff better, to go back now, it's like, for someone who never played it then, I just, I understand why they'd look at it and go, like, now, the, but, but, it's horrible. But with the remasters that they did on the Xbox and PlayStation, they, they kind of refined the controls, though. Right. Com- compared I still to what play it, the original, so Compared to what it was on the Dreamcast, yeah, because it was kind of tank controls on the Dreamcast, whereas... Right, yeah. It did... So it contro- really controlled like a car. Literally, yeah, it was but, a car control. <laughs> yeah, but, but they did improve the controls with the, the updated versions, uh, which I think is really, really good. Um. But, but, but yeah, you know, that's a great series, and I would like to see a conclusion to the freaking story at some point, you know? And I hope, and I think the only one they're going to do that is a, is in an anime because there's no news on a fourth game in the series at all. I think they've kind of they they've ended it to be honest. You might get another one in ten years. It took them ten years or twenty yeah. years to get the first, you know, third yeah. one out. Forward to play that when I retire, then. Yeah, but but yeah, the anime is really really good. It's it's so good. So, um, the, the yeah. developers that made it that went on to do Yakuza, yeah, I see um. Because after Yakuza, they've brought the Judgment games out. So I good. Noticed out, I noticed there's some DLC coming out for Lost Lost Judgment, I saw. Oh, nice. Okay. Mm, yeah, I still need to play that ju- Judgment as well. as another one on my list to play. So The newest the first, one or the first one as well? The first one. I haven't played either of them. Oh. I'll play that instead of Shenmue. Right, okay. I played that re- within the last year or two. That is, obviously, that's like Yakuza... With a bit more detective story. Yeah, yeah. Goose as Shenmue without the exploring and just mostly fighting mm. cut scenes, and Yakuza uh, Judgment's the same, but a bit more exploration. Mm. Yeah, I did want to play Judgment, I must admit, because I did enjoy the Yakuza oh, really series. Very really good. Yeah, Song of Life was my favourite, probably, out of them. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, man. Um, I'd just say a quick news, yeah. Webby, just a quick yeah, one. Go, yeah, go okay. for it. Uh, 
basically the last two weeks they've had a lot of um hoo ha with playground games, you know, making trying to make the fable. Right. Basically a few people have left and they've had a re shuffle and some people have left and a new guys took over as um lead designer was Paul Haynes and right. um a few people are left and one Spanish bloke who gave an interview. I think it, I don't know if it's translated perfectly because he did it in Spanish. It basically said it, it's shit and they don't know how to make a open world adventure <laughs> game. <laughs> so, and they try to make it like a car game and and it's not coming. Apparently, you're not going to hear nothing for another year. So it's I don't, I don't go as far as to say it's in development hell, but. Let's just say they've had a few problems. Oh dear. But, but everyone's now in charge of where they're supposed to be, so fingers crossed it doesn't get, get cancelled and go the way of um, scale bound, but never know. Yeah. Um, and just on another note, uh, Free for Free Industries put a note out this week as well about Halo. You know, we, we were moaning about it last week, um, and we all know that, that the game has lost a lot of players. Um, <laughs> they actually come out and said that... Um, that they're not happy that they've been una- they've been unable to meet player and community expectations. It's been a difficult situation, and it's taking the team to work through, and they need to focus on season two. Um, that's like we were saying earlier, Stunty. I think Halo's just gone to shit really since three four three took over. To be yeah. fair, uh, the, I just feel like they don't know what they're doing with the game series at all i mean it took them about four or five years to fix uh the halo Master collection Chief. the must yeah. collection and now obviously infinite the campaign was okay my players just died because i just you know it's a free-to-play game they need to be doing updates re- regularly you look at how fortnite does it and and call of duty they've got it nailed down to keep people engaged whereas halo they're just like oh yeah we'll just keep the same maps and game modes for six months Oh, it's not going to work. You got to keep, keep people interested and engaged on these. They're trying to be free to play and a paid for game, and maybe you know, release maps, map packs, months or whatever down the line. And they haven't really done any of it. Have don't they? fuck all, oh, lazy bastards. Yeah. Mm. Um, and that's it. There's been no questions this week. So. Um... I will briefly mention there is. I did see advertised something about like an Unreal event on the fifth of this month. Okay. Oh, the Unreal Engine, yeah. Yeah, I okay. think they're just showcasing a few more sort of bits and bobs of what it's capable of, or something. So, like an Unreal showcase or something. Awesome. Speaking about the Unreal, did you hear that um, CG CD Project Red are going to be using Unreal Engine five? They're not going to be using their own engine for the next Witcher game. Well, they it's are. probably for the best since obviously <laughs> the uh, since Cyberpunk didn't perform as well as expected on the console. Um, yeah. yeah, I think I think it's more to do with the fact being is that um, <clears throat> they've had quite a few people leave. I was listening to a thing on Digital Foundry about it. Oh, okay. Uh, and there was a thing to say that uh, the reason they've gone to the Unreal Engine is because quite a few people have left CD Projekt Red. Yeah. Um, and to get other people in, <clears throat> it's easier to get them in because they know the Unreal Engine. Whereas yeah. CG, um, what was it? Was it the Red Engine? Was it? Oh, I can't remember. Is it the R- I think it's the RE. I think it is the Red Engine or something like that. Um, they said it was because of the way it was designed. They would, if they employed people, they would have to train them up on the engine. Um, and because people keep leaving, they're going to have to re employ, yeah, retrain them up to use the engine. Whereas Unreal is a lot more in this industry standard, yeah. So that's the reason why they've gone down that route. So, that's fair uh, enough, <clears throat> yeah. Well, as I say, why, why make your own engine if you if there's a perfectly serviceable one out there that you can just mm. kind of use you know you've got the tools there and it's easier to hire people that know that specific tool set then it's makes sense i think it's if just you're not... going to rent it out to people it's probably not worth i know ea do the frostbite and all and then oh, they use sucks. that on all the games but i mean who's gonna look at oh you know, the cd project red engine and think yeah i'll, re- I'll pay money to use that yeah. to make my game yeah it was it's like that yeah. so 
Whereas Unreal is kind of an industry standard now, isn't it? You know, so yeah, many games companies. You know, how many games use it? It's quite staggering, to be fair. Yeah, you I had think that. What was it? Source, Source Engine, which Valve. I, don't, I think yeah. that's had back in the day. Now yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Unreal's pretty much everything, isn't it? Yeah, I think, I think it's. I think it's nice to have different engines though, because it creates different style games because I do remember in the 360 there was a lot of the games used the Unreal Engine and you did notice that quite a lot of the games all look quite similar because they all use the same engine um, and that's why I like it where you and the Digital Foundry did say that I said it's a shame because it is nice to see a different engine in action oh someone's just opened the door um, a bit like oh. a bit like Sony you know they use uh, for um, they use a decimal engine, don't they, for um, oh, what is it, uh, Death Stranding? And um, oh, Horizon. yeah, the Death Stranding look, I mean, that engine's really good, mm. uh, yeah, it looks stunning, yeah. So, it is nice to see different engines, you know, instead yeah. of just the Unreal Engine. So, okay, I've got a question from Peebs and Clarky, they both asked the same question uh, who's getting Lego Star Wars and on what system if you are getting it? Not getting it. I would like to get it, but oh, not, not fifty quid. No, I'm not really a big fan of the Lego games. I think they're a bit boring. It's the same thing. They were great. Yeah, oh, they were good. The 360 era. Yeah, but it's just ones. too many. You know, it's just kind of got oversaturated. Oh, it's go in and collect a load of these coins and smash shit up and go to the next level. Meh. I liked Lego Chase uh, under what was it? Chase McCann won the um. Oh, what was it called? The Lego one, the open world one that was a bit like GTA. That one was really good. I enjoyed that one. Comment was Lego called. City. That's it, yeah. Oh, Lego yeah. City Undercover. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. I thought that was an awesome game. That was the last, probably the last Lego game I played. Well, Lego Star Wars games are generally pretty decent games, though, to mm. be fair. Um, and I think they're quite good though. to play co op with, you know, if you've got a kid, mm. do some couch co op. Fantastic! I think my boy's a little bit too little for those sort of deal, but no, it's not. It's not my cup of tea, man. I'll get it, but I'll wait until it's cheaper. Yeah, I'll wait till I can get it for free. <laughs> That'd be day <laughs> two, then. <wouldn't> it? <laughs> uh, anything else you guys want to mention before we end? No, oh, only oh. only to peeps. What's going on with your team? They're crap. <laughs> <laughs> Well, on that note... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, peeps. I mean, we've finished 45 minutes past your bedtime, Stunny. I know, I know. I'm going to have to send you a bill in the morning. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, just to remind everybody, this is the last live stream for five weeks. Podcast episodes will still come out every week, apart from next week... The way it won't come out on the Tuesday because I won't be recording until later in the week for the Patreons. That's because I'm flying on Sunday. That's our, and that's our recording day. And I'm not going to do another show before that. Don't have time and don't say anything or whatever. There's not and so there's not going to be any live streams because of the time zone difference. However, there still will be a show coming out on the feed. All new people for those five weeks. The Aussie guys are going to come on. So you've got your Sly Armand, Turner. Uh, Wes and who else was going to be? Remember, I think it was Follow. Follow, yes, because he's Australian, isn't he? Yeah, Turner, Wes, Sly, maybe Bolo. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, uh, so, so that'll be quite interesting just to change things up. So, mm. good times. So yeah, from and that's it. So from all of us here, it's been awesome. Thank you very much for listening. If you do want to sign up to the Patreon, just visit patreon.com forward slash 360 gamercast. You can sign up for five pounds a month, get an episode every single week of the year, or you could sign up for a whole year in one go and get a ten percent discount on, on your subscription fee if you sign up for a whole year in one go. It's up to you. It's all it's all good to have choice. Uh, to get all the links to social medias and discords, just head to 360gamercast.com. Everything you need is there. And that's it, guys. I'd like to thank you all for coming on. 
It's been awesome. So from me, Mark Webb, Gamertag, Pierce on the D, Steam ID, Webby 360 g And from me, number one, Stuntmaster. The Nick fights on the Twitter and the Twitch. Yeah, so so sweet. So thank you very much. We will see you in a couple of weeks. Goodbye. <laughs>